Hello everyone and welcome inside to West High School for the start of the 2022 high school football playoffs on KSL Sports Rewind. It's the West Panthers taking on the Hunter Wolverines. I'm JT Wister, still ecstatic to be joined by Brian Brown to get things underway in the postseason. Reunited JT and it feels so good <laughs> and no better place to do it than here at Gene Palmer State or Blaga, excuse me, Stadium at West High School. An exciting game tonight as we've got a great matchup of West Side Schools with Hunter and West uh, to kick off the playoffs. Hunter takes the field now. They will receive. West won the toss, deferred to the second half. Red Dub is lit up top. West hoping they can get one as well here. And they already got one versus this Hunter team early on in the season. In that one, it was a 44 to nothing thrashing of the Wolverines there. West got off to a hot start and pretty much never looked back, Brian. And you were on the call last week, and they did the same thing against Granger pretty much. Won that one 42 to nothing. What did you see out of these Panthers? It, it's a team that's come through a lot of growth this year, JT. You're seeing them start to execute well on offense. They've found their groove operating out of the kind of more of a power set in the running game and then allowing Isaiah Sui Sui to really operate as a uh, game manager more so than a playmaker. And then on defense, it's just chaos, right? They've got a number of, of high-end talented players, D1 prospects, and they've built a culture of discipline on that side of the ball that served them well. Kenyon Jackson's going to be back to return this kick in a moment, the leading receiver for this Hunter team, but they like to run the ball, and doing that on this West front is a tough task. It is, and it's a it's an odd front, a three-man front, but that doesn't mean very much because it is such a massive front. Kaimani going to be the one that you're going to point at uh, on this front, one of the edge players, highly touted recruit at the next level, um, and, and one that... As fans tune in tonight, you're going to watch out for number nine. Ari Kajanori is going to get ready to send this one away, and what a great time it's been. It's been a fun and fast 10 weeks of the regular season, and now it's finally time to get the postseason underway. We are officially off to begin the postseason. It takes a bounce, gonna stay in bounds actually perfectly. Eventually fielded by Maleni, but down at about the 20. That one looked like for sure it was gonna end up bouncing out of bounds and be a penalty, but lands perfectly. Yeah, Ari might have a chance as a uh, professional golfer with a yeah. lob shot like that <laughs> off the kickoff. In fact, I may have to have him teach me how to hit a lob after that one. Great job landing the ball there, able to capitalize on the awkward bounce. And Hunter gonna start with uh, less than ideal field position, we'll call it. Less than ideal indeed. So Nathan Park, the quarterback for this offense, making his way out now. 367 yards on the ground, six touchdowns, 674 passing yards, four touchdowns there. And you can already see the heavy set. This team wants to run the ball, as we told you. And it's going to be a, a modified front for West High School, as you see them with four, almost five down linemen. But unfortunately for Hunter on that play, JT, nothing doing. This is a strong, stout deep front at West High School. You want to talk about reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Oh my goodness. The Panthers absolutely devoured their prey that time. And one of those games where you always wonder how a team is going to start, especially one that's as highly rated as West High School. Firing off the ball immediately, that's a good sign for this West High defense. Yeah, and one of this team's leading rushers in Sotel as well is not playing today. So we'll see how they're able to operate now in second and about, looks to be about 14. Four yard loss on the play. You see West loading that front line. Still give it on the ground once again. They'll actually keep it to the outside. Has a man wide open in the flat and it's hauled in. So how about the reception by Havita? Yeah, nice job by Havita to, to reel that one in. Quarterback backing up, throwing off his back foot. That's one of those dangerous throws, but West going all out with the front, trying to pin Hunter back early. Able to pick up some yards. That's some good offense for the Hunter Wolverines. And now they're right where they want to be on third down, JT. Third and Brown Bear. Yes. <laughs> Been a while since I heard you say that one. And for Nathan there, Nathan Park, the quarterback. It's a nice delivery, you know, pressure in his face as you talked about, Brian. And now we'll see if they can get something. As you mentioned, third and short, everything on the table. Park under center. 
He'll give it. Panthers actually drops again, but just overshoots his intended target. Fooled me on the fake there, Brian. Yeah, did a nice job, and you're going to see a lot of that kind of rollout action tonight. Looks like it was Connor Anderson that bounced off the uh, hands off of there, or, or perhaps it was uh, Spencer Nelson, uh, the tight end there. Long story short, JT, no conversion there for Hunter, and they're going to punt. That's a quick three and out for them. Actually, before the game, they actually had a little bit of a number change. So it's actually QA who was the intended receiver there. Flag comes in here as this one takes a nice bounce in favor of the Wolverines, as we see, trying to get the edge. That's, so this is going to come back no matter what after that block. And you see Whistle's just blowing it dead even after he stepped out of bounds. But that's yeah. three three flags, like all in a row, almost perfectly, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> flags two and three, I think, were the same play. It looked like it was a blindside block, which, you know, anytime a player comes at another player in the open field from a blindside, regardless of whether or not that player is, you know, head in front, like we used to teach back in the day, they're going to call that here at the high school level. They want to minimize those big time hits, those kind of pointless hits, the, the highlight hits that, that really are just more dangerous than they are solid football plays. So the West offense takes the field now. West on the season, 316 points scored, 96 allowed on the season, and look, 40, 44 of those as well came against Mother Day. So one of the premier offenses, Mother Day as well, still the top ranked team in high school football nationally as well. And to give this West defense some credit, they turned that Mother Day offense over five times as well. The offense struggled a little more in that game, but an opportunity to get some things done here as we finally see all those penalties being sorted out. Yeah, and this one's definitely going to back up the West High Panthers, but for this explosive offense, and it's not that the kind of explosive that you might think where they go five wide, a lot of deep down, deep, deep field threats or anything like that. It's power football, but they just run the ball extremely well. It looks like we might have a, uh, looks like the West High defense is back out on the field, so I, I wonder if it was a roughing the kicker there on that one, JG. Yeah, so not entirely sure what it was. I, I personally didn't see roughing the kicker, but I guess it must be. So either way, a nice opportunity for Hunter. So they get the first down, and West still trying to move guys on and off the field. Pieces all over the place for this team. Just going to be a give to the inside. Runs into his blocker at first. West able to drag him down for a short gain on the carry. Yeah, nice job by number 33 there. Uh, Fima Feely Snuka, who... Uh, Prodigy of Jimmy Superfly Snuka. If you're curious out there, uh, does a great job turning the running back back to the inside there, able to push him back into the heart of this West High defense. Park, we'll give it again, straight ahead. West, all over it. Wall of Panthers is the PA announcer said, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I read led there by Ryder Messina, one of the leaders of this defense, leader of the football team, does a great job of filling the gap from his linebacker position. That's the exact kind of play that you want to see a linebacker make, JT, especially if you're a University of Utah fan. Very true, very true. So we'll call it about third and seven now. I don't know if you guys have ever been to West High School, but it has the brightest scoreboard you will ever see. Third and seven. Pressure breaks through. They set up the screen. It's hauled in, but Panthers all over it. They'll drape him down for the loss. Yeah, you can see the but screen developing. But another late, another late flag coming in as there well, Brian. Yeah, you're right, JT. You can see the screen developing there, but I think this one's going to be contingent upon that flag, especially at that you know, location. What? Looks like it might be a defensive, either face mask or perhaps a. Uh, he went high on the tackle, yeah. so I also wonder if they're talking horse collar. Could be either one of those. But the West Panthers, this defense just beating themselves early. And I remember that first game when I went out for modern day. That was something Coach Solovey talked about was do not, we cannot beat ourselves. And that was something that happened against modern day, but understandable. It's a top ranked team. But early on here, they're beating themselves. They are. And this is an aggressive defense, and they want to play fast. They want to play aggressive, and they want to play physical. And you can see that they're trying to find the lines where they can operate within that. You know, uh, Gary Patterson at, at TCU, former head coach there, used to talk about playing with controlled fury. And that's really yes. where West High is right now, is trying to find that control. Trying to sort everything out as well. We've had both these times now, we've had our officiating crew taking a little bit of time to kind of figure everything out themselves. <laughs> Yeah, not exactly sure what the holdup is here. It looks like there may be some communication issues. Uh, there's a signal. Oh, it's actually on the offense. Yeah, it looked like it was an ineligible man downfield. An interesting call there because I thought the ball was thrown 
behind the line of scrimmage, but perhaps it wasn't. Perhaps the running back had already crossed. Yeah, I guess. In interest, interesting, whatever happened there. So they'll accept it. It'll make it third and call it third and nine now, or third and eight, actually. So a little more than third and brown bear. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and listen, you know, for, for the West High defense, it doesn't really matter because they play so aggressively. Their goal is to not let, let you allow, it, get any kind of yards in this situation. But an interesting choice by Coach Solovi there to accept the penalty rather than declining it and perhaps getting to the fourth down. Still have official, a couple of conversations from our officials as well. Hey, you know, it's 10 games, but sometimes it takes, you know, some guys get a week off, takes a little bit to get to those playoff juices flowing. Apply, applies for our refs as well. Yeah, and then, you know, maybe they're just trying to give these guys a little bit of a breather early on. And, Very nice. And trying to catch their breaths as well, like you talk about, especially for those teams with that first week bye. Yeah, so they just moved them back about, we'll call it three yards maybe. So now we'll call it fourth and 12, or third and 12, excuse me. So third and 12 from this one. That's a tough situation for this Hunter offense. It's not built to convert on those third and long plays. You know, and they've seen, we've seen them early go to the air, trying to get the offense moving. Be very fascinating to see what they're able to come up with at this play. First time we've seen Park in shotgun today. Five-man pressure will break through. Running for it, Park going to get dragged down by who else but Ryder Messina. Yeah, and again, Ryder Messina is a guy that all year long has been a fantastic leader. You see the pressure from Kaimani there at Lautaimi coming from the outside edge, forces Park up in the pocket, and then Messina right there spying the quarterback, makes the play. He's a fantastic player, just fun to watch. Saw a rare tempo punt kind of there. Tua One going to haul it in. He didn't fair catch it, and he caught the ball up, and I believe the Wolverines got it. Oh, wait for the final signal, but I believe you're right, JT, and there it is. That's a huge, huge misstep here by this West High Panther football team. That's the kind of play that can allow this Hunter team to grab some momentum, maybe get an early score. Now you're rolling this defense out for a third time already. Boy, that's just a really, really tough one to manage if you're a West High football fan. The Wolverines have yet to get a first down themselves. They've been aided twice by West penalties now, and they've been two extremely costly ones. So we'll see after that one. We'll bait it by the penalty as well as right there, just not being able to haul that fair catch in. Actually, it wasn't fair caught for, so that might have been part of the problem. Yeah, and a lot of traffic on that one. The tempo punt looks like it worked out there. Tua and not quite ready for it. And here's some trickeration, JT. Goes for the reverse. Looked like at first it was setting up a pass, but instead just running out of bounds is going to be Jackson. Yeah, Jackson, a speed, sir. You're seeing they're trying to get him outside, but so much action on the pitch play with the reverse there. He's so deep in the backfield. It takes a long time with that arc to get any kind of movement. He's able to pick up a pretty large game. We're second and average here, second and four, second and five. So that's a good situation for Hunter to be in. Hunter offense will once again go under center. Back is Paya. They'll give it to Paya. Paya. Straight ahead, drag down for a minimal gain. Yeah, just a simple zone play off the left side there, able to pick up some yards, get a quick tempo play here by Hunter. Definition of tempo, they'll try to go with the QB sneak. Can't tell if he got it at the moment. It looks like he's right on that line, Brian. It's going to be very, very close on this one. I suspect that the officiating crew, we've always already seen them be very careful. They'll probably call for a measurement here, but a good job by this West High defense to get up, get ready, and to stop that QB sneak. Hunter really trying to go with the tempo early on to catch him off guard, and West was not surprised. Yeah, tempo got him on the punt the pre previous time. They tried to go with the tempo that time. Doesn't work, and it'll be fourth and short. Brian, are you trying the same thing here or maybe getting a little more creative? Well, this is a tough situation because you're on the 20-yard line. You've got an opportunity to get points if you have any confidence in your kicking game. Hunter's going to come out in a little bit of a power set, though, try and spread out this West High defense. Park. Try to go with the hard count. Gives it to Paya. Paya straight ahead. Paya is met and knocked back. Who else? Brown in again. Right there with him, Ryder Messina as well. And this linebacking core from West High came to play tonight. That's a massive, massive turnover on downs for this defense. It took them three tries. They finally got the West High offense out on the field, though. Oh, they're, they just said first down Wolverines. Wow. I mean, we're at a bad angle for it, I'll say that. But at the same time, Brian, man, I did not think he got there. I, I'm with you on that one, JT. It looked like he was stood up right at the 20-yard line. That's in a very aggressive spot by this officiating crew. Now a fourth time for this West High defense to try and rally. 
High snap, Park going to keep it on the draw, and then absolutely devoured. Flying in again is Ryder Messina. Whatever Ryder Messina had for lunch today, I need that every single day. He brought his hard hat to play tonight. He came to work, and he's doing some serious damage in that Hunter Wolverine backfield right now, JT. Yes, he is. Flies through that time. Makes it a no gain. Honestly, they're lucky it's that even after the high snap. Going to dip under five to go in our first quarter here from West High School. And for this Hunter offense, look, it was a rough start to the year. They started out the season 0-8, eight, oh eight, but got those two last wins to go get a little bit of momentum going to the postseason. Yeah, and the, this team is all about growth as they try to get some kind of movement here on second down, but again, just stuffed up by that West High defense. Yeah, Khalil Sony, Malu in on the stop as well as a few other Panthers. That's, and that's one theme that's been throughout the night, right, Brian, is multiple players flying to the ball, getting their hats on it. It is, and, and that's part of why this West High defense is so good. They fly to the football. They play aggressively. This is a pretty good offensive line from Hunter High School. Sizable group, pretty experienced, a lot of upperclassmen. But you can see that West High defense just so well coached right now. Third and 11 from Hunter. Tries to roll out, escapes the pressure, scrambling, running, diving. Not going to get there. Well, it was a lot of escapism back there by Park, avoiding Khalil Laufo in the first time around, and then Kaimani Lautaimi in the backfield as well. You can see this defense with their hands on their hips. Like we said, JT, four times they've gone on and off the field. They, they are tired already, and you're going to see Hunter is going to attempt a field goal here. Going to see the kick here. Be a little more than 30. Okay. Nearly blocked, and it might have been because it's no good. Yeah, blocked or not, that kick had no chance once it left the foot of the kicker. Great job by that West High special teams unit to fly into the backfield as they have all game long. And for Hunter High School, you've got to get that corrected. You cannot allow guys to shoot through the gap, especially on a, a special teams play on a field goal protection unit. That's an absolute huge MA missed assignment. How about West defense, I'll say, in back-to-back -back weeks? You were there when Granger marched all the way down the field for him, stalled on four downs. That time they decided to try to kick it on the fourth down there, but still not able to get there. So Junior Solovey, the offensive coordinator for this team, that was not the case when I called their game versus Modern Day. Former offensive coordinator actually was Massini, and Massini actually got a promotion. So decided to step away from the team, and since Junior has taken over, been more up-tempo as an offense, and he feels like it's helped everyone grow as they'll go for it. Snap was bobbled, suey suey, all day to throw, waiting, got to scramble, no one there. Crosses the 40 as he is flying down the open field. He'll get to the 50 as well until he finally goes down. What an electric run from Sui Sui. Uh, and that's why he's such a highly touted prospect, especially when you look at moving on to the next level. Explosive athlete sees that everything's well covered there by Hunter High School. He's not even going to mess around, JT. He sees green grass. He's going for it. And it actually looked like he almost got more tired than he did at, you know, <laughs> have a problem with the Hunter Wolverine defense. Great job by his wide receivers out there blocking for him. It looked like Caleb Williams versus Utah this past weekend as well. <laughs> too soon, JT. Too soon. <laughs> Hunter is not happy. Looked like they saw a false start. Instead, Sui Sui, pressure in his face, going to loft it to the outside, just throws it away. And West High choosing to go, looking, looking like they want to go with a throw game early on. Kind of an interesting yeah. choice, JT. You talk about it. Coach Solovi wants to go more up-tempo. They want to move the ball quickly. They want to put points on the board. This is a very talented offense here at West High School. That was as animated as I've seen a coaching staff as well, I'll say for Hunter. I think they were really adamant that there was a false start there. Did not get the call. Instead, it'll be second and 10 with Sue Sue. You're seeing Hunter defense almost kind of flinching there a little bit, trying to draw this West Panther front offsides. They do a good job of it there. That's going to be a fascinating dynamic to see if that continues all game long because there is a, a you know, on defense, you're allowed to move. You're allowed to shift. Maybe we'll see some stunting as well before pre-snap. Uh, West High, just got to be more disciplined, especially up front. Makes it second and 15, Sue Sue. Waits, gets it to the outside, hauled in by Vailahi. 
Vailahi making moves, spins out of a tackle, makes another, breaks it, keeps spinning, keeps driving, doesn't get the first down, but still a large gain by Vailahi. Great job there, great play call by Coach Lelovi. He just throws a little wide receiver screen out there. You see Charlie Holbrook out there leading the way. It's great when wide receivers block for one another. Coach Chris Hooper's got to love that from his unit. And Vailahi, you can see what a talented player is. Spin after spin, keeps moving forward. You love that kind of progression. Tempo works pretty well for Hunter. So you see the Panthers get back on the ball right away. Sue Sue as well with someone at receiver, running back, and even at the safety position. Lines up everywhere. And man, did he look like he belonged amongst mo the modern day monarchs in that previous game. Sue Sue stepping up, scrambling, evading, buying time, gets it downfield to Amani. Arona with the reception for the big first down. When we talk about Isaiah Sue Sue, he is the straw that turned. That, that... <laughs> <laughs> that uh, spins his panther, panther drink. Uh, you know, does a great job in the pocket there, moving around, uh, but finds his favorite drink of all, Mai Tai Arona for the first down. Arona straight ahead gets it once again on the short game. See a fly come in as well. It's not been a clean game here early. Uh, and not a clean call for me either on that last one, as I was trying to say, a straw that stirs a drink, JT. <laughs> But again, it's the same story for Wes early on here. It's missed assignments, it's mental errors, it's things within your control that you have to get under control. And, and that's kind of been the story of this program all year, as it looks like this one is. I'll say what, this is some of the yeah. longest conversations I've seen between calls just to start the game. And see if it's a common trend here, as it is, it's going to be a flag on the defense. It's a finally. participation penalty against the Hunter Wolverines. Looked like too many men on the field there for them. And, uh, you know, that's, we talked about the same thing for West High. That's 100% true for Hunter. You cannot have those kind of mistakes against this West High football team. Mentioned the run by Arona previously. He has over 270 yards on the ground. Sue Sue with over 649 yards just on the ground. Vanuka with 286 and Vailahi with 184 as well. So this team gets after it. Yeah, they have a variety of weapons. Ty Arona, usually a running back, catches that one out in the flat. Great job by Sui Sui to find his running back out there. First down in just outside the 10. Pressure breaks through and Sui Sui able to break out, just throws it away. Yeah, uh, and that's probably the best result for that one is it's just kind of a mess from the beginning. Hunter doing a great job of getting early pressure on Sui Sui. This offensive line from West High needs to settle down. They need to stop worrying so much about the stunting and the early mimicking and start picking up their men in, in protection. So second and 10 from the 10. Arona lines up behind Sui Sui. Now a motion next to him. Saw the late shift there. Sui Sui waiting, has time, goes to the end zone, no one home. Yeah, some kind of miscommunication there. Sui Sui throws to an open space where there is no receiver. And, and you're seeing this offense is discombobulated by the early flinching of Hunter High School. A great technique from this Hunter coaching staff to try and get him up, you know, confused up front and, and out of sorts, and it seems to be working. Well, speaking of discombobulated, we have another stoppage now as our officials are once again talking things over. Seems like too much time may have ran off the clock, so. You know, I mean, both these teams were in action last week, but it seems like some playoff rust going on right now. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's the hard part about coming off a, a Wednesday game, right, where you have all Good that point. free time off and kind of give your guys a chance to get their legs underneath them a little bit. You know, there, there might be a little bit too much PlayStation or Xbox going on, a little too much of the Cheeto action. What's Call of Duty? This weekend comes mm, out? So. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to see some real struggles in yeah. the next couple of weeks, right? It's bad news for Kyler Murray. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, Tell here, me if you heard this before. We got a flag on the play, Brian. Yeah, and this is one of those things, you know, that's, that you have to call that penalty if theory of the official because it is a false start. It's a clear false start from this West High offensive line. And it just, it looks like they're just deflated. I don't, I, I'm very confused because this is an offensive line in the unit. I call them trench town block because they are so dominant. They're huge up as well. front. Yeah, and, and a lot of great uh, potential next level players up there too. Some of my favorites and just a very uncharacteristic effort from them. See if they respond. Now it's third and 15. Sue Sue with time to throw. Throws a dart in. Gets it to Holbrook. Holbrook dragged down right on the two. 
Charlie Holbrook, one of the more underrated wide receivers in the state, JT. And you can see what happens when Sui Sui has time to throw, finds his guy in rhythm, gets a great conversion there. And they are, wow, actually not going not gonna to be able to get the conversion as it is fourth down now. Yeah, it wasn't fourth. It is fourth down, so they're going to take a timeout and step away. We will as well on KSL Sports Rewind. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. Back here inside West High School, where the Panthers have an opportunity to punch one in. Coach Solovey opted to take a quick timeout. And now we'll see what they do. You can see Arona in the four point stance. And they give it on the sweep, actually. Get it to Vailahi, and Vailahi gets in for the first score for the Panthers. Well, great job, great play call there from Coach Solovey as, as he tries to fake the aggressive dive play. From Arona, nice little fly sweep hand off to Vailahi, who is a very nifty runner. See him spin, juke, and drive right into the end zone for the touchdown. A fitting play to cap off a solid drive from West High. That's one of the best sells I've ever seen from a running back there. Arona looked like he was ready to explode out of a cannon, sold it perfectly. The PAT is good. Panthers lead it 7 to nothing with 40 seconds to play in the first quarter. You're watching the West Panthers and Hunter Wolverines on KSL Sports Rewind. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them. Because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the University of You. Isaiah Sui Sue looked absolutely sensational on that drive, got his team in the position, and then gave it to who else but Vailahi. Yeah, and it, there's so many options. And, you know, Ty Arona, one of the favorites there of the goal line, he's a strong physical runner, does a great job of being the decoy in that situation, and they give to Vailahi on the fly sweep. Puts West ahead after some very early miscues. Almost an entire first quarter of just bumbling, for lack of a better term. Bumbling by both teams, the officials. I mean, the score messed up at one point. The color us, guy on us, the broadcast. Play -play play too, a little rusty too. <laughs> Shaking off those. Play like you said, it's been. We had a week, week and a couple days off as well. So everyone, everyone getting back into it, literally. You know what this game really needs more flags. <laughs> Every football game I watch, JT, that's the first thing I, I think of. Can we get any more flags? <laughs> You know, a lot of people watched that Pac-12 game this past week in Utah, USC. They're like, ah, oh, I can't see worst officiating there or more flags there. Woo! Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the call was. Is this one was before even, uh, even the kick. And it looks like this one's going to go back against West High, I think. This is a delay a game? Oh, interesting call. Wow, I, I can't tell you the last time I saw a delay a game on a kickoff. That's a lot deeper than I like to dive into the rule books, JT. <laughs> But we'll try this one again. Is it looked like West had a? Uh, I'm not sure if it was a necessarily an onsides or maybe just a pooch kick there. On, yeah. but maybe they're going to go deep with this one now with the penalty. So Janori kicks it deep. Jackson walls it in. Jackson trying to squeeze out to the left. 
Panthers on him, but Jackson gets a corner. Jackson, he'll cross the 30. Jackson, just the kicker to beat. Calls for his blockers to get in front, makes the cut back. Finally chased down. What an explosive return by Jackson, taken down at the 35. Well, I'm watching the whole thing, JT. The wall is set up to the middle of the field. Jackson trying to get to his blockers, and I thought for a second, that's going to be a mistake, but guess what? He is so fast, he just outran every single one of the West defenders trying to take a bad angle to get to him. Finally finds that wall, and he's off to the races. I'm going to go ahead and give a shout-out to our guy, Ari Kajinori, who does a great job of not necessarily tackling him, but slowing him down enough to allow his guys to come up and tackle him. But even better return there by Jackson, and that gives this Hunter Wolverines offense a lot of life. Another opportunity for them over the 50. 24 seconds left in this first quarter, so we'll see if they opt to just use one or two opportunities to get plays off. They'll give it pressure in the face. Once again, it's a fake. Park got time, has a man open deep, trying to find him, just lost it in the air. Yeah, nice play action. Great play call there by the Hunter Wolverines coaching staff, but they're testing Tua One, who, in my opinion, is one of the heir apparents for best cornerbacks in the state. You know, Smith Snowden will move on after this season. I think Tua One is going to be one that takes that spot next year, and he's able to recover and, and close the gap regardless of whether the pass would have been close or not. Yeah, good delivery by Park as well. It just unfortunate, just lost it in the air. And those are tough to track sometimes, especially if you're not as used to running routes. But it's a tough one for a younger football team, especially a younger quarterback, where he's amped up after the big play, just puts a little bit too much extra on it. You and I have never been accused of being extra, right, yeah. JT? <laughs> Park, Paya going to bounce it to the outside after getting it from Park. Paya dragged down, but it's a huge first down run for the Wolverines offense that will end our first quarter, but what a run to do so, Brian. Yeah, it's the first time we've seen West High lose contain on the edges there, and it's a big punishing play, not characteristic of what we've seen from this West High defense all season long as Hunter Wolverines taking some momentum here into the second quarter, JT. We'll see what they can do when we return at West High on KSL Sports Rewind. Mountain Land Power Equipment provides exceptional service and high quality brands you know and trust in lawn, landscaping, and snow removal products. Our experienced staff of technicians repair all types of snow plows, snow blowers, lawn mowers, small engines, and is trained to answer questions about lawn, garden, snow removal, and landscaping products. Mountain Land Power Equipment, now with two locations to serve you in Salt Lake City and Springville. Panthers in front after one seven nothing, but a huge run has an opportunity for the Wolverines to tie this one up. And this is a West defense as well. Look, they have four shutouts on the season. One of those we talked about was against Hunter. And just they've been very productive on offense. In region, they've been nearly unstoppable. 260 points scored to only 34 allowed in region one play. Yeah, and this is a team that just steamrolled through the region. And, and for good reason, there's a lot of talent in this West side defense. So I think that's what makes that kind of loss of containment even more surprising. Jackson hauls it in, survives the first tackle, then drop for a loss of one. Uh, nice job there by, I believe it was Manaya Brown out there on the, the edge with the defense. And, and again, you know, that's the part about this West High defense that I love when I watch them play. They are so well coached, read that play to a T, not able to let the uh, tunnel screen develop. And, and now Hunter back into a little bit of a stuck position at second and long. Talking about Brown and Messina combined coming to this one, 99 tackles. Paya straight ahead. And look at that Hunter sideline right now, Brian. They are going tempo, 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 tempo. Well, this West High defense has been out there for the entire game, and, and you can see them a little bit tired on the play action here as they're a little slow to get to spots. Spun down, nice tackle made in space that time for West by Lutukia Naoa. And a little bit of scuffle away from the ball as, as some players are having to be separated. But nevertheless, Hunter up and trying to get rolling right now. Yeah, fourth down. A distraction technique. They'll give it to the outside. Paya makes a man miss. Able to get the first down before he's met. 
Yeah, met hard in the hole there by, wasn't able to catch a number, but Paya, big, strong runner. We were able to see him get some extra yards after contact there. And West High is going to take a timeout here and try and settle some things down. They'll try to settle it down, and we'll see if they're able to do so when we return on KSL Sports Rewind. It all starts with a smile. To show you care, offer a sign of love, welcome someone home. Even when we don't see each other, or share a room, even without words, smiles bring us together. Let's keep yours healthy. Stonehaven Dental. Schedule online at StonehavenDental.com. Hunter with a huge fourth down conversion, and that tempo is just proven difficult for this West defense to handle. Coaches decide to burn a timeout there to try to give their guys an opportunity to reset. Yeah, probably a smart play because you really don't want this Hunter de or offense to get any more momentum than they already have. See the QB sneak. Park charging ahead. Quarterback sneak. You're seeing Hunter going with everything they have early on, trying to catch West off guard, trying to catch him in any kind of you know, mistake or, or misalignment there. Park, a very strong, surprisingly strong runner. We haven't seen him really get out and run too much so far other than a few rollouts on passes and able to get a few yards there. Second and three opportunity for Hunter to tie this up. And as we mentioned, they didn't even score the last time they played the Panthers. So a very different game opportunity here if they can turn it around. Paya is the back. Park fumbled the snap, gives it to Paya. Paya waiting until he's engulfed. First there, who else? Ryder Messina. Yeah, Ryder Messina is playing just an absolutely phenomenal game tonight. And this is the problem that Hunter High School is going to have all night long. When you try to line up and go mano y mano against this West High defense, there's always going to be a Ryder Messina on the opposite side of the ball that you're going to have a hard time accounting for. With the offensive line, you're trying to get to second level. They've got a lot of big, strong dudes up front that are just not allowing those Hunter offensive linemen to do that. And you can see the effect that it has from Messina. One thing you got to imagine was part of the Hunters' game plan as well was just keeping Sue Sue off the field. And they've already been able to kill almost three minutes in just the second quarter. They'll give it on the ground once again. Paya with the cut. Paya stood up. Oh, it's Park who keeps it. Park diving to the sideline, and he's met. That ball came out. I believe they'll down him about the one or the two. But Park with another fantastic fake. Yeah, great job on the fake there. And you see Park finally trying to use those wheels. But he is met in the hole on the outside there, I guess. Technically not a hole, but there at the sideline by West Defender, just a great job. I think that was a uh, Takoi Suva coming from the uh, outside linebacker position to stop Park and knock the ball loose. Now the ball was already out of bounds, so there's not going to be a fumble or anything like that. And now Hunter in a do-or-die situation with fourth down here from the one. They'll go in the gun, Park and Paya in the backfield. Mano a mano, Park drops back, waiting, lofting out. It's deflected. The Panthers with the stop on the goal line. Well, Hunter tries to go with some trickeration a little bit with the formation there, trying to spread out this hunt, uh, this West High defense. They're not having it. It's just a great job there by Snuka off the edge. And it looks like we've got something going on down here. The whistles and a flag after the play, it looked like to me, JT. But who knows what we're going to get from this group. <laughs> They've done a great job of surprising me so far tonight. How about this West defense, though? It's the second time now they were, where they've been put in a bad position, basically, and still able to make plays out of it. Just backs against the wall, and they bucked up and got it done. Yeah, like I said, great job there by Faimafili Sunuka off the edge, getting in the face of Park, not allowing him to see his receiver, who was blanketed by West High defenders. I believe it was Taimani uh, Brown who actually got the deflection, but this one is going to go against the Panthers. Wow. It's a costly at the moment. It looks like it's going to back them up. I mean, it's going to be at the one. Well, not only that, but it looks like it's going to be a first down for the Hunter Wolverines. Nope. 
Okay, now we see the offense going on the field. So, so the Panthers are going to be backed up here. Dangerous territory. But, again, we're seeing this officiating crew being very deliberate, talking to some of the players out on the field. I guess they're trying to really limit the scuffles and, and everything yeah. like that that are going on right now. A unique technique, something we really haven't seen a lot, you know, for you and I especially, where we watch a lot of college and NFL football, in addition to everything we call in high school, you know, a teaching moment perhaps uh, from this officiating crew. Yeah, based on the timing of the flag, I was surprised. I thought they were going to get it around more of the 10 just because of when it came in. But nonetheless, just keeps West at the one. So a 99-yard drive is what they're going to need. They'll have nine minutes to do it, so more than enough time. And who else would you want to lead it other than Isaiah Suesue? Yeah, and, and this big West High offensive line, we haven't seen them run a whole lot right now. You probably just want to see them do something with the power front. But they'll give it. Bouncing it to the outside, it's a big gain. And look at the strength! A huge carry for Iloku. Vainuku just takes a basic outside zone handoff. Not a lot to it on that one, but you can see the physicality of this West High Panther offensive line. One of my favorites, Trenchtown Block in their element, just folds that Hunter defense down, opens up a huge hole, and it's a 20-yard explosive play, JT, and West is rolling. Just like that, as you mentioned, is a 20-yarder exactly for this unit. Suisue with time, gets it out to Holbrook quick. Holbrook pushed out of bounds. Yeah, just quick game right there. Quick throw out to Charlie. He gets 10 yards on the play. You can see why he's such an underrated back uh, wide receiver. Just big, strong, gets that 10 yards, and Wes is back in it. Well, it gets a little short, actually. Yeah, just short, and we saw movement once again up front. This will back up West off the false start. Uh, a little confused, JT. I thought that was at the 20-yard line. It looks like it was at the 22, according to the sticks. I, so I saw the Wolverines movement first, and that's what it looks like our officials saw as well, because it will be a neutral zone infraction. Mm -hmm. and it, that's the difference, right? Is if you're going to do that mimicking, if you're going to stunt, if you're going to move across the front, it has to be lateral. It can't be upfield into the neutral zone. As soon as you cross into that neutral zone, they're going to throw that flag. Of Samisi Tonga, right guard there, we knew all the way what it was going to be. Suisui dropping back, looking to Holbrook to the outside. Holbrook can't bring it in. Yeah, just a little bit outside, right off the fingertips of Charlie Holbrook there. But a nice job by the West High offensive line to pick up the stunts and twists. Again, Hunter throwing everything out there they possibly can. They have to get a stop here. You do not want to go down 14 nothing, especially giving up a 99-yard drive, JT. They need an explosive play. They could just again give it to... Vaniku as well, because man, what a run that was. Yeah, and a great play call out of you know a, a two-back set there. A lot of options that West High can go with, and that's what you want to do is just give that defense so much to think about. Sui Sui gets it to Vailahi. Vailahi makes a move, cuts it once, meets him at the first, and he'll get it. Uh, you see Ceci, maybe a little bit too much action. At some point, you've just got to plant a foot and get upfield, try and get in that first down. Ceci trying to get that that juke on the defender so that he's able to get the big play. Nevertheless, able to get the first down. Another first down for West. They continue to move it. 7.20 to go as they get to the 45. Sui Sui on the give. And Vailuku draped down for a one yard gain. And we're seeing another flag come in, Brian. Yeah, and it was a great job by Hemi, Hema Malini to come down uh, from his linebacker position make the stop there on the outside. Kind of a similar play to what West High ran earlier, JT, at the goal line. That time, Hunter held up and, and made the stop essentially at the line of scrimmage. A personal foul against Hunter here is going to move wow. the football, and that's a really tough penalty if, if you're Hunter High School. You know, it looked like they came in a little late, but it's, I mean, it wasn't super late, Brian. I, I didn't know if it was worthy of a penalty personally. I'm with you there 100%, JT. Now, the, the part that we don't understand is whatever was said in that huddle True. down there at the very beginning of this drive, if he said, we don't want any more extracurriculars, and you bring that, it's going to be a flag every time. You have to stay mentally disciplined right now if you're Hunter. It's a good point. If it's been a clean game, might not see it at all. So, Sue Sue and this offense will shift to the 39. Sue Sue back to pass. With time, looking deep, wants it all, and is intercepted. It's picked off. The pick by Jackson. And he crosses it. It's Nathan Park. It's the quarterback. Park, Park down the sideline. Park, one man to beat. And he'll finally get Drake down. What an interception by the quarterback, Nathan Park. Wow, JT. Just a tr tremendous turn of events there. Westside looking like they have momentum as they're driving. 
Big penalty there from Hunter, and you see Sui Sui sitting back there thinking, 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 just kind of lets it rip. Not able to hit his wide receiver in stride. A little bit too low on the throw there. Something that we see a lot from Isaiah. He's got such a strong arm. He just wants to zip everything into that window. And nice job by Park. Step in front of it. A little bit of a little uh, chess match going on. Quarterback versus quarterback. And you see the big return sets Hunter High School up now for a chance to go and tie this game up. Yeah, what a job by Park. Able to read Sui Sui like a book. Park now go to the ground. Paya. Pot, nowhere to go. They're everywhere. Yeah, just swallowed up by that West High front. Looked like a, a coalition of, of guys up there led by Khalil Laufau uh, from his defensive end position. And Laufau and Lautaimi are two of the best edge players in this state. Uh, you know, really tough to run against this West High front. You see Pia trying to reverse field, just not able to get anything. Be a loss of three on the play, so second and 13 from the 28. Just under six minutes to go now here. Park under center once again. They'll give it, trying to bounce it to the outside this time. And they'll get the yardage back and a little bit more as well as a successful carry that time by Kua. Yeah, Kua, the running back there, does a nice job taking the handoff off the edge there and, and, and able to get... Like you said, that yards that they lost in the first play, the problem is, JT, now you're in third and long, right? And then we've seen this offense. They have a variety of stuff that they like to run. Uh, have to deep, dig deep into that bag one more time and figure out something to try and get some yardage on this West High defense. Third down. I've already seen a lot of trick plays. I wouldn't rule something like that out as you see an empty set from Hunter. Park waiting, trying to buy time, and he'll go down. Big time sack by Kaimani Latuami. Uh, Kaimani, like I said, one of the best in the state. Very phenomenal edge defender. You can see it. Once you get into his clutches, it's, it's done so, JT. You're not getting out of it. Great job by him to wrap up Park. Pushes Hunter back into fourth and long. And it looks like they're going to go for this one here. Can't say I disagree with that decision. You've got to take some risks. So hopefully you have something in your back pocket here in terms of a play call. So the huge sack from Live Timey. We've seen this Hunter defense respond, it's the West defense respond on fourth down once already today. Can they do so again? Fourth and 12 from the 27. Park, bring a corner blitz in. Guys in his face and they get to him. West back there in an instant. Fourth down stop. Yeah, swallowed up by multiple West Side defenders there. Great job sending the blitz. You can see how well they operate with this linebacking and defensive line core. Looked like to me that it was number eight there, Kaimani Lautaimi, that got the sack again. It's like Leo Laufau that played before. And just, you know, when you have to deal with both of those guys on either edge, it's a tough task for this Hunter offensive line. It is a tough task for this offensive line. Great job bringing pressure, as you highlighted, Brian. And, you know, got him. You know, Sui Sui wants that throw back. You'll get an opportunity to make amends for it here. Yeah, he's still a junior, JT, so he's got a lot of growth to, to still come. And that's what I've loved about watching him all year long. He's bounced back from his mistakes positively almost every single time. Sui Sui going to keep it. Tackles for a minimal gain. Brought down by number 10. In on the stop by Carson Scanlon. A great job again by this West High, or uh, excuse me, this Hunter defensive front, not fooled by the sweep action, staying with the ball, reading their keys, making sure that they stop the quarterback at the point of the attack. Second and long for the Panthers. Second and long for Sui Sui. It's been all Holbrook and Vailahi early. See if he can get anyone else involved. Sui Sui, pressure in his face, gets it out in time, hauled in, and a first down. That time it's Jacob Wilson. Yeah, Wilson, another one of those guys who doesn't get a ton of receptions, but when he does, it's usually at a critical moment. Kind of a Britton Covey type player in terms of being able to move the sticks. You know, I'm not going to compare anybody at the high school level to Britton Covey. <laughs> He's one of the best we've ever seen, but in that ability to get a play when you need it, great job by Wilson. Sui Sui and the Panthers offense trying to go up tempo, get it out too. By Lahi, by Lahi makes one miss, trucks another as well. By Lahi, what a catch and run. Well, you see by Lahi learning on the fly in this game. Earlier, he was trying to juke defenders on that one. He just lowers his shoulder and runs him over, converts the first down. You love to see that kind of play from your wide receivers. Good physical running. 
by Lahi dropping bodies to the floor. The goal on the ground once again. And this one goes for about six. And now you're starting to see this West High offense settle in and run their kind of game. They love to go with this up-tempo look. And Tyrone is such a strong physical runner. He's very quick to get to the hole. And once he does get to the hole, he's a load to bring down. Easy five-yard gain there for West High. Yeah, you're talking about Arona as well as you bring another guy into the mist in Vinuki. I mean, those are two of the toughest and most powerful backs to bring down in the state, and they're all one team. Absolutely, and you've got that big offensive front that does such a great job with them, too. Arona charges ahead, gets about three, will be third down here. We're just going to dip under three minutes now. West has two timeouts left in this one. In this one. And you've seen West running one of their favorite plays. They love to go to that counter tray, and Teletui Pututau just not able to seal the inside. Good job by the Hunter uh, defensive line to shut uh, Arona down at the point of attack. Yeah, you mentioned Pututau doing a good job at that left tackle spot, holding things down. They'll give it up the gut. Sui Sui actually going to keep it. Sui Sui straight ahead. Big gain. Well, that's the difficulty with this West High offense. You may stop them once, but you're going to have a hard time if you aren't staying disciplined. And they go so quick with so many weapons that they just mentally wear you down as you're out there. And, you know, earlier where they limited Sui Sui on that play to just a two or three yard gain, now all of a sudden they're moving the sticks. And this is where you really have to dig deep if you're that Hunter defense. So two minutes to go in this one. Sui Sui with Arona next to him. Look to the right. He's going all that way. Gets it out to Vailahi. Vailahi nearly uses his stiff arm to throw a man down. Vailahi is just a grown man out there, Brian. Oh, well, you, this wide receiver core is just loaded and deep, and they play aggressive, and, and it's fun to watch him. You see, Vailahi stops. If he doesn't step out of bounds, he's got an inside step, nothing but open field to get to the end zone. You've got to be physical if you're a cornerback or you're a safety out there guarding these wide receivers. Take a timeout, so we'll come back. A minute 51 to play here in our first half between the Panthers and Wolverines on KSL Sports Rewind. Other universities didn't fit into my life. They said I'd have to quit my job to go to school. They said it would take me four years to graduate. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them. Because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU. The University of You. Panthers marching, Isaiah Suisui, as well as, as well as Arona. This drive started all the way back on the one. It was the huge run by Vainuku, and now they'll pick it up from the 20. Second and two, Vailahi, they'll fake it to him. Arona gets it straight ahead. It's another first down for the Panthers. Yeah, and look, this West High offensive line doing their work early, opening up a lane, and you can see Arona is just great at getting downhill and getting through that hole. It was a great job of moving the sticks there. And you're seeing Coach Solovi in his bag as he's making the, these plays calls. We talked about Coach Solovi playing up tempo. That's what we're seeing right here. Up just under a minute 30 to go. Sui Sui drops back, waiting, surveys, makes one man miss, roaming, got the edge. He's going to run for it and steps out of bounds. Yeah, does a great job of making the defender miss there. Number 43, uh, Ralph's not able to make the tackle. And you can see the niftiness of Isaiah Sui Sui there as he avoids the defender, gets the outside, sidesteps out of bounds, saves the contact, able to pick up positive yards. So 117 to go after he was able to evade it. That play took 12 seconds as well. So Sui Sui with all day to throw. Credit that Hunter secondary for, for not breaking down. Yeah, and again, a tough situation where you're running into the boundary here, not a lot of space. Your wide receivers are not able to get across the field in time. So good job by Sui Sui to just get out of bounds and get positive yards. Sui Sui, Sui, Sui serving, waiting, launches it to the left by Lahi, hauls it in. The second touchdown of the game for the Panthers, and it's hauled in in the back corner. A great reception by Jacob Wilson. A great job being patient by Isaiah Sui Sui. Reads the defense, knows his wide receiver is going to break open, throws the ball to the spot. Vailahi, easy catch, easy touchdown. 
big, big, big drive from this West High Panther offense. On to attempt the PAT, so a minute 10 left. They're able to complete the drive, get the score. They'll put the PAT through as well. West in command on KSL Sports Rewind. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. Jacob Wilson hauls it in for West. What a drive by Isaiah Sui Sui and the Panthers offense, Brian. Yeah, great job by Wilson there. Apologize for misreading the number, but by law, he's done such a good job. Also, Wilson done a great job, had a huge conversion on that drive, reward the guy with a touchdown throw, uh, just a well-executed drive, the kind of drive that we've come to expect from this Panther high, uh, from this West Panther offense. It'll be interesting to see what this Hunter offense tries to do as well. The Wolverines, not the most explosive unit as well. We'll see if they're able to get something going as they boot it away. One guy who is explosive, Jackson, he's back to return. Not going to have an opportunity as this one. Instead, he'll be picked up by Moleni. He'll charge ahead, taken down at the 20. Yeah, swallowed up well by this West High kickoff team. A little bit of lane disruption there from West, able to limit the kind of damage on that one because of Ari's great job on the lob kick. I, I, I'm fascinated by his ability to stick the point in the ground, JT, and have the ball almost come straight up uh, on some of those kickoffs. A really rare thing, in, in especially uh, you know in the kicking game. You're talking about the defense of the Panthers. It has to start with Ryder Messina, and he has been electric tonight, Brian. Yeah, Messina, again, a senior leader, a captain on this team, I believe. He's done a great job all year. He's, he's you know, getting the defense where it needs to go and, and you know, expecting to see this uh, defense shut down Hunter here. Park charges ahead before he's draped down. 44 seconds left. Looks like the Wolverines are just going to run one more play. Potentially, because they'll have to want at least one more, Brian. Yeah, and it just, you know, probably a smart move by Hunter. You're only down by two scores. You've done a pretty good job all game, but really, you've never had any drive with any kind of rhythm on offense, right? And so trying to get into rhythm with less than a minute left, really tough task. He's doing a good job there by Malu, the nose tackle to wrap up uh, the running back, Paya. Final carry of the game, and he's blasted. Big time hit by the Panthers. They came to play. Julius Tukosuva. Yeah, Julius Tukosuva, another big hit on the other goal line previously. And you can see he loves to bring the thunder when he goes to make those tackles. A really fun and exciting first half, JT. And it looks like. Mark's a little shaken up. Yeah. In the field. And you can see how big a hit that was. Has to be helped off as well. Yeah. That, that's a huge, huge, huge storyline going into halftime here for Hunter High School. First half down, and what a half it was for West. You know, had some penalties. Defense able to get some stops. Brown, Sui Sui stepping up. Vailahi, the touchdown to Wilson. Holbrook making plays, too. What are your thoughts on this West offense? Well, yeah, this they, West team, I should say. This defense has been outstanding as well. Yeah, you know, and this is kind of what we've seen all year long from West High School, where they have to limit the missed assignments. They have to limit the mental errors early on. And once they do and they settle in, they're fantastic, JT. And you can see it on that last drive. 99 yards for the score. It was efficient. It was effective. You saw Isaiah Sui Sui making great decisions, using his legs at time. And this defense starting to find its rhythm as well. You know, I think a lot of the early trickery from Hunter threw them off. But we're going to have an exciting second half here, JT, as it is only 14 to nothing. 14 to nothing. The Panthers will get the ball. When we come out, we'll see what they can do with it. We're back with you in 14 minutes and about 50 seconds on KSL Sports Rewind. But going into the half, Panthers 14, Wolverines nothing.
Welcome back inside to West High School. The second half set to get underway between the Wolverines and Panthers on KSL Sports 3-1. JT Wichersill and Brian Brown still with you on the call in what figures to be an exciting second half, Brian. Yeah, lucky us. They haven't gotten fired yet, JT. Made it all the way through the season into the playoffs. Hopefully Somehow. best season turning in right now to hear this. But uh, an exciting first half for us uh, here at uh Gene Randall, or uh, excuse me, Gene Plaga Stadium. And I apologize to all the West High alumni out there. Gene Plaga was a phenomenal athlete here at West High a long time ago. And I keep butchering that last name. But part of it is, JT, I'm a Highland guy. So I oh. played at Larry Palmer Stadium. <laughs> a, lot of Clark, a lot of crossover there. <laughs> a lot of great athletes have come through Gene Plaga Stadium. Tons of state champions for this historic West program over the years. And look, there's a lot of talent on this team. you got to take it week by week. There's some really good teams in 6A. But look, they've proven against modern day, as I talked about. They've turned, they turned the Monarchs over. And that's an offense with guys who are going to play high-level Division I football. Turn that offense over five times in that single game. We've seen what Sue Sue can do. One of the best quarterbacks at buying time and scrambling as well. This team's capable of making plays. They are, JT, and, and there's a lot of talent on this squad. All year long, the big knock has been just how how disciplined can they play? We saw early on a few miscues, tightened it up. Excited to see what they do here in the second half as Hunter will kick to West High. They go for the onside kick, but ready for it and getting on top of it quickly was Mania, was Mania Brown. Yeah, Manaya, well, well traveled football player here at West High School. You know, coach's son, uh, one of those guys who's been around football his entire life. Uh, you have to know that he's prepared and ready, and, and a good job by this West High coaching staff to have them ready. A big risk there, in my opinion, JT, yes. by Hunter. Yeah, very interesting and aggressive play call there as they try to get the onside. Doesn't work, so we'll see Sui Sui and the offense start with it at the 45. And this is a team as well, as we mentioned, Coach Solovey taking over the offensive coordinator roles. And this team's only other loss outside of modern day was American Fork. American Fork, another one of the premier teams in 6A as well. Yeah, and early on in the season, too, where West High was still kind of trying to find their, their identity. This is a program that's still developing culture and everything like that. They have it with plays like that. Looking deep, Holbrook creates a separation. Holbrook crosses the 10. He'll get in. Touchdown, Charlie Holbrook. West strikes on the first play of the second half. I said it before, JT. I'll say it again. Charlie Holbrook is one of the most underrated wide receivers in the straight. You see him reeling the ball there. He heads for the end zone. You're never going to catch Charlie Holbrook when it's open field. And that is an explosive play out the shoot for West High. Great job by Isaiah Sui Sui. Hits him in stride. And it is nothing but pay dirt for this West High offense. Ain't gonna be underrated if you keep making plays like that. My goodness, you're able to create, get behind the defense, Sui Sui with a gorgeous throw, and just like that, it's 21 nothing. We're heading into our first break. Panthers getting it done. For over 25 years, Salt Lake Running Company has helped people of all ages and levels find the gear they need to start their fitness journey. From a free custom shoe fit analysis to a premium assortment of footwear and workout essentials, SLRC is a top 10 run shop in America. Locally owned, locally operated at five locations along the Wasatch Front. SLRC is there to help you gear up and get out. Visit a store near you or shop online at slrc.com. What a job by the West Panthers. And when you talk about these teams' premier playmakers at the wide receiver spot, you talk about Ceci Vailahi scored on the sweep early on. You, Jacob Wilson as well scored on the long touchdown. And Charlie Holbrook getting the second half started emphatically. What did you see there, Brian? Yeah, he's just up at the top of the screen here. You'll see JT gets off the ball explosively well. Little move on the defender and then gets by him, gets those hips turned. And it was nothing but clear field as soon as he reels in the pass. Great throw by Isaiah Sui Sui there. And as you can see, the only thing that stopped Charlie Holbrook was the fence there in the end yes. zone. <laughs> Hent Hunter set to get it back here. Takes a bounce. Fielded by Maleni. Maleni waiting, following his blockers, and just steps out of bounds. Yeah, Maleni more of a physical runner, not the kind of explosive back that you see from Jackson, for example, who has that speed, that twitch, that ability to get outside. Uh, you know, West does a good job. 
pushing him into the boundary, using their leverage, using their numbers to get him out of bounds. But still, decent starting field position for Hunter. We'll see if they can put together an actual drive, JT. They've been able to get yardage and move down the field, but not able to do it in rhythm. It's been a combination of West High mistakes and, and penalties and, and, and miscues and, and also good plays by Hunter intermixed with that, but nothing to where they've sustained a drive all on their own. And already we got a whistle. We got a timeout already. Wolverines trying to get everything together. We'll see if they can do it when we come back on KSL Sports Rewind. Mountainland Power Equipment provides exceptional service and high quality brands you know and trust in lawn, landscaping, and snow removal products. Our experienced staff of technicians repair all types of snow plows, snow blowers, lawn mowers, small engines and is trained to answer questions about lawn, garden, snow removal, and landscaping products. Mountain Land Power Equipment, now with two locations to serve you in Salt Lake City and Springville. Coming back in, the Panthers defense didn't even have to do anything, and they've already forced a timeout, Brian. Yeah, I, I guess that's one way to start out a drive, JT. Uh, listen, if you've got the wrong personnel, the wrong package, whatever it is that you want to start with, you want to make sure you start this drive off right. Hunter out here in a very heavy set. Start in the shotgun, as you mentioned. Motion both tight ends out to the outside. Park to air it out, pressure in his face, and he'll be dropped. The blitz and the ball came out. Ball is out, and it, do the Panthers have it? We'll wait on the call here. Yes, I do believe that the Panthers have recovered that one. Not surprisingly, the players think they do. We'll wait yeah. and see what our officials say. And it is West Ball. So two plays into the second half. West has a touchdown, and they forced a fumble. The blitz flew in and absolutely engulfed Park. This is the this is the start that we wanted to see from this West High football team. You see Julius Takuisuva come from the outside, able to hit Park on the fly, dis dislodges the football, and it is recovered there by the West High defense, and they are cooking here at the 20-yard line with goal to go. Yeah, goal to go, so we'll see now what they're able to do with it. West comes out in a similar look. Sue Sue gives it to the outside by Luku and gets it across. What a run by Vailuku. Yeah, big gain there by Vailuku, able to get to the 10 yard line there and get out of bounds. Again, early, often we're seeing West High be aggressive, be physical. This is the start that we thought we were gonna get in the first quarter. Vailuku and Arona in the backfield, Sui Sui dancing with time, Sui Sui escaping, gets the block, Sui Sui tries to dive, at the one was taken out. Well, I had my hand up. I thought he was going to get in for the touchdown there. JT has to sidestep at the very last minute. You know, again, Sui Sui is such an elite athlete. Sometimes you have to rein him back from maybe trying to make the Superman leap in the end zone or something like that. Does a great job, points out the blocker, but just at the very last minute, 100 defender falls, forces him out of bounds before he can cross the goal line. Sui Sui gives it, easy walk-in touchdown, another one for the Panthers. This one courtesy of Vanuku. Well, just an, another day at the office for this Panther offensive line as we see Samisi Tonga with another enlistment into the pancake platoon as he's driving his defender off the ball and into the ground, opens up a massive hole. Vanuku strolls in, just another walk in the park. Great job by capitalizing on the turnover of this West High offense. This is the West team we thought we would see from the jump. It took a half, but they are ready. They are explosive, and they lead it by 28. We'll see what kind of response the Wolverines have in store when we return on KSL Sports Rewind. It all starts with a smile. To show you care, offer a sign of love, welcome someone home. Even when we don't see each other, share a room even without words smiles bring us together let's keep yours healthy Stonehaven Dental schedule online at stonehavendental.com
What a second half start it's been for the West Panthers. This offense, this defense, one play a piece, or, or before that long, the little couple plays I took for them to punch it in, I should say. But the first play of the half for each side, what a start for this unit as well. And Brian, going back to that sack, what did you see that West did that forced Parker to lose the ball? Well, what you're seeing, JT, is West bringing pressure off the edge and just collapsing that pocket immediately on Park. Just too many defenders on the outside, and as he gets collapsed, the ball pops loose. Again, we saw Park walk off the field gingerly in the first half. I have to wonder if maybe there's some sort of an injury that's affecting his ability to hold on the football as Hunter has a Jackson good kickoff room here. Flowing, flying off. Jackson carrying a couple with him. Be downed at the 45. Jackson been by far the most explosive element to this Wolverines team so far. Yeah, without a doubt, JT has done a great job of putting him in excellent field position. You see the only uh, unfortunate part Part about that he spins right into a West High defender there who makes the tackle but otherwise Jackson has done a fantastic job of putting Hunter in position good field position if you're West that's one of those things you don't want to take a gamble with going forward might need to game plan to kick it away from him talk about this West defensive line players like Malu as well as Lautaimi it's just a potent group and they've gotten home time and time again you see the three four front here going to work and Lautaimi flying in and burying the back. Yeah, and again, Julius flying in from the backside, the early start to that. But what you love about watching this West High defense is the gang tackling. And they get together and they get they tackle as a group. And they you love to see guys flying to the football and, and celebrating with their brothers and everything like that. This West High uh, defensive front does a great job of doing that. Park. Gives it to Paya. Paya shakes one, crying ahead. Paya with a couple yard gain. Again, same thing we talk about is there's a little bit of pushing and shoving as uh, Paya gets up off the ground. That just three, four defenders at the point of attack every single time, JT. So hard for a back like Paya, who's a strong physical runner, when he gets to the outside to have to deal with those three defenders. He's just not able to break that many tackles. So third and seven with 9.15 remaining. We talked about it in that first half, just it was very slow to come by. Points were and drives were. This time a little more explosive. Paya running and gets a few. And that was, looked like we got a couple of flags in on there. That looked like to be a late toss well after the play was over as well, Brian. But I didn't yeah. see a second flag come in. Yeah, that flag was early too. And it was Kaimani Lautaimi being held by the Hunter offensive lineman. That's why you saw him throw <laughs> the offensive lineman at the end. And you can see why Lautaimi is such a highly sought after prospect. He's so strong, so gifted. He did a great job of taking on the blocker at the point of attack, tried to shed him, got held instead. And this one's gonna go back big time against Hunter. Yep, as you mentioned, Hunter backed up. So it'll be third and seven. Uh, excuse me, not third and seven. I, they need up. They'll update the scoreboard in a second, but it's going to be a lot more than third and seven for head coach Harold Malini and his squad. Yeah, a really tough proposition for Hunter. You know, trying to run the counter on third down. I, I, I like the offbeat play call. We'll call it just you know trying to yeah. catch West off you know off guard and, and and maybe get a seven yard conversion there in the run game. The problem is this West High defensive front is so well coached. One thing I'm interested to see as we get deeper into the playoffs is Ceci Vailahi has only been playing receiver lately, was a dominant running back for this team in the past. We'll wait and see if they opt for more. Park is a man wide open and just overshoots him. Oh boy, was West High lucky to get away with one there. Blown coverage, Park has his man wide open. Just throws it over, overthrows his receiver. One of those throws that you have to wonder if maybe the injury played into it just a little bit there. Ah, one of those balls yeah. you definitely want a back. Bust in your park. coverage. Waki Taiwaki Via was the man who missed it there, waiting on the punt, but eventually they'll get it away. It's going to take a bounce, a favorable bounce as well for the Wolverines as they'll be able to down it deep inside. And, you know, for West defensively, we don't see get receivers pop open. That frequently. No. What, what happened on that one, Brian? Yeah, interesting play breakdown there, as, as you can see. Just Tua Oni dropping back into his zone. He's looking for a safety over the middle, it looks like, and just not able to find him anywhere. But again, Tua Oni, we see making the smart decision on special teams after the fact. 
lets the ball bounce. You know, he had an earlier muff of the punt, just playing it safe. This offense is clicking and firing. You want them to just get the football back. Don't try and risk it. Don't try and do anything, you know, out of character. So Isaiah Suisui, as you mentioned, only a junior as well. Got to be one of the top returning quarterbacks in the state. And going back to that play, Brian, what did you see in the coverage-wise for the yeah, Panthers? You see that one of the defenders gets drawn in thinking it was a wide receiver screen. Has he seen Sui Sui? Sui Sui, it loses the ball as well. Out. That oh ball goodness. is out. We'll see. Looks like they're going to call it a safety at the moment. Officials came in blowing the whistle early, but there's also a flag down. Yeah, it looks like it's in the area of holding. Fascinating to see how this one turns out, JT, but that could be a huge shift in momentum for this Hunter defense. Talking it over right now. See what it yields. Appreciate all of you who are joining us on KSL Sports Rewind as well as the YouTube channel. Our officials have had many a meetings tonight, Brian. This one, one of the biggest. Yeah, I've seen church organizations with less meetings than these groups had JT trying to make sure they get everything right. And again, at the high school level, there is no review. So you like them being thorough as possible, but this is going to be a fascinating play call. So it looked like the call was holding. I'm not sure. Based on where the flag is, yeah. that's holding in the end zone. Wow. Oh, they're going to say he did get it away. So intentional grounding. Wow, Sue is Sue able to barely beat the sack, but he did throw that one away in the end zone as well. Yeah, and, and, and so I believe that it's, it's a spot foul. Loss it down, I believe that is... Looks like they've got the ball positioned at the one yard line. Yeah, Malo Maloney is fired up about it. He's talking it over with our officiating uh, crew. And I, you know, I can understand why he's upset because I was under the impression that, you know, if something like that happens in the end zone, that that is an automatic safety. That's what I thought as well. Yeah. And they're still talking it over. Yeah, it was an interesting one. I mean, great job by the pressure breaking through by the Wolverines, able to create it. Sue Sue was fighting and somehow was able to get the ball away, they're going to say. But, man, as you mentioned, that was definitely intentional ground. There was no receiver even close to the area. That was just an example of Sui Sui just trying to do anything he can to avoid a sack. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure that the play call is really something that you want to go with right off the bat there if, if you're West High, just because you're, up, you're still somewhat up against your goal line, right? And uh, the rollout pass, there's a lot of things that can go wrong there. Go wrong there. It does look like they are going to start out there at the one – or set the ball at the one yard line, but it is a loss of down. And now the bigger issue is you're second and very, very long. Looks like it's almost what, 22, 24 gonna, yards, you JT? Know, the, the Hunter coaching staff is still coming out. They're not done. They want an explanation here. They are fired up on that sideline. Their fans fired up as well. And I mean, it makes sense. And we're gonna, yeah, it's gonna be another stoppage in play. So we're gonna continue to talk things over here. A fun little addition we have to our booth tonight is we have a laptop up. We are trying to rewind and see exactly what happened. Unfortunately, just like this officiating crew, it's not cooperating as we expected. Yeah, a little slow tonight for yeah. both the officiating crew and, and our techni uh, technical side of things as well, JT. But you know, at this point in time, I think it's really important that this crew gets it right, right? Because this is things are starting to get out of control, right? It's 28 to nothing. The Hunter's done a, a, a great job early on in the first half of limiting the big plays and, and, and trying to contain this one. And Wes is trying to break it open right now. It, so if you can get any kind of momentum going, if you're Hunter, that's a huge, huge uh, event for them, a huge situation. And so I, I can understand why the coaching staff is petitioning so hard to try and get an explanation here. And safety was the call, so wow! Finally, they rule it a safety after almost five minutes after the play happened. With the call, kick off. Well, uh, JT, I'm not going to brag about being right for once, but, you know, I, 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 one of those situations where it was clearly in the end zone where, where the, the uh, intentional grounding occurred, I, I just wasn't sure what else you could go with there. And, and listen, the credit to the West or to the Hunter coaching staff here for continuing to petition and, and, and to go back to the officials and, and try and get an explanation. And it does feel like they eventually got it right. But the bigger thing, JT, this is a huge swing in momentum for Hunter High School. This is a massive swing of momentum, as you talked about, Brian. And, yeah, just a crazy play. It looked like it was clearly a safety. And then there was a 
a delay as you try to figure everything out. So just madness here at West High, out here at Gene Plaga Stadium. Yeah, and the kind of madness that you would expect in a first round playoff matchup between two schools that play in the same region. And now even more so, West is gonna give the ball back to Hunter and we've seen Jackson have a lot of uh, success in the return game. This could be a big turn of events for Hunter. It could be a massive turn of events, as you highlighted. We're about to see how it's going to play out as well. Getting the ball back, that offensive momentum. They'll have to kick it off from the 25. So set for the big boom. And we're just what kind of momentum can this give you as a team? I mean, this was an offense that last time we saw him fumble the ball away, and now got to be pretty fired up. I guess. In between that, they did have the quick punt, but it hasn't been a lot of good. Looks like a little bit of a pooch kick was misplayed at the moment. Still fumbled around. They almost didn't get it, but finally jumped on top of it late. Well, he's seen the big fella there, number 99, trying to scoop it up on the fly. I'm not sure. Well, I know exactly what he was thinking. Nothing, because that's one of those plays where you just want to avoid the football rather than trying to pick it up off your feet. So near disaster avoided for Hunter. They'll start out here at the 46-yard line. Again, JT, fascinating to see what happens on this play. As earlier, Hunter was able to get West to break coverage. You have to think that they're going to go back to the, to the run game in a little bit here and then maybe see if Park can get a big play. Paya charges ahead for a couple. And that's really where Paya does his, his best work is right there up the middle, but you can see so many West defenders. He's not able to get the, the five-yard gains that they're used to. So 7.45, just a little under that, remaining here in our third quarter. And what's been an exciting one. Man, we had enough, enough action in those just five minutes, basically, Brian, more than we did in our first half. Yeah, and, and again, like, like I said, that's the start that I was expecting from uh, West High School. As you see, Pia runs into the teeth of this West High defense again. And it's Laufau and, and friends, just Messina, uh, uh, Everybody there for Basically, the tackle. I mean, it's, it's been that multiple times tonight. This West coaching staff, the, when I asked Coach Sullivan, what's the message going into this one? He quoted Bill Belichick. A lot of coaches do, right? Do our job. And mm -hmm. that's what they've done. You want 12 hats to the, you want 11 hats to the football. You want to feel like you're getting 12 hats out there. And that's what it has tonight. Yeah, and really, this, this West side defense is well designed. You got the three down linemen that do a great job of occupying blockers. And those linebackers flow so well, fill gaps so well. You know, just a great setup. Utilizing their talent. Going to be Park on the carry. Park draped down. Big time tackle by once again Lao Fu. Brought down by Khalil. A little RPO action, it looked like, is there, you know, potential for the wide receiver screen out here for the field side of things. And great job. Credit to this West Side defense. They're able to limit the damage from the safety. And now it does look like we're going to get a punt here. We're going to have a timeout as well because they just don't have personnel ready. That's a mistake you want to see in week one, not in the first week of the playoffs. So they'll take a break. Some people are going to get yelled at during it, and we'll come back. So here comes the Hunter punt unit out here for the Wolverines. Is Look, you get a safety, not ideal where you have to kick it away, but that is what's going to happen now. And we'll see this West team, see if they can get explosive return as well in a moment. You know, we're seeing another conversation going on. They blew the whistles for the timeout, so we should already be ready to go after this. I, I'm not sure what the conversations have been tonight. It's been a lot of checking in. How's your day going on between our crew, Brian? Yeah, we're just making sure that everybody's being taken care of, you know. Water. It is, it is a season. You know, make sure you're drinking sparkling, your water. Sparkling, sparkling, too. We're all in the desert out here. You know, make sure you stay hydrated. <laughs> Tea and crumpets. A lot of wellness Tea checks. and crumpets all around. Uh, the only thing I wish is that I wish they'd do a wellness check with some of that kettle corn in yes. the south end zone. Oh, my gosh. This aroma is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Outstanding and agonizing for me. <laughs> 
I completely agree with that as well. So while we have a lengthy conversation going on here, I want to take a second and tell you guys about some of the playoff scores we have going around the state. Of course, we have a ton of great games going on. Dusty Lister holding it down on the Red Zone channel for you, and as well as great other action. So Layton up big on Harriman, 36 to 14. Mountain Ridge up narrowly over Westlake, 28 to 25. Shout out to Mike Lagerschultz, who's on the call at that one, by the way. Roy Weber taking on Roy, a surprise. Weber has the lead over Roy, and Roy is coming in with great momentum. So a shocker there. Riverton in front big. Pleasant Grove up big. Lone Peak up big. West also taking care of business, as we know. Fremont in front of Granger. Fun little upset brewing there. Then we got Alta, who's up big on Bonneville as well. A great one brewing between Wasatch and Woods Cross. That's 20 to 27. Park City in command above against Timpanogos. Box Elder has the advantage against Highland. And man, Cedar Valley's offense has been outstanding tonight. They have 52 versus Viewmont. Yeah, a tough one there for Drew Jones and the Vikings. You know, I talked to Coach Jones the week previous and knew that that was going to be one that they were uh, aware of how good Cedar Valley really is. And, and you're seeing some of these scores. You know, Olympus over Payson in a big road game. Olympus, one of those teams that's lost a few close games, had some injuries hit them a little bit. Excited to see what they do with, and that's a big first round win for them. Yeah, huge win for the Titans. And that's a like you said, the pay Payson's got some explosive weapons on offense. They do. So the score there is insane. So after a what felt like three hour break, we are back now. Still no clue what caused that second most recent one. Yeah, but Hunter comes out with the offense on the field now in fourth down. Yes, they do. Just off quickly, throw to the outside. And a great job getting a hand on it and deflecting it by Tuko Suva. Yeah, not sure who was throwing the ball there. It was, looked like it was number six for Hunter on the kind of trick play. Yeah, Dallin Harding. Yeah, and, and just a good job by this West High defense again to be ready for it. That's been the MO of Hunter all game long, right? They're pulling out all the stops. They've played West before. They know what they're facing, JT. They're doing their best to try and give their kids an opportunity to win here. Again, the tough turnover there on downs, but you've got to try and find a way to generate more points than just the safety right now if you're Hunter. You know, one thing we could talk about, Brian, it's very interesting how the RPI worked out. They're ranked, West is ranked ninth. I do not see the ninth best team in 6A. I'm going to have to agree with you there. You know, the third third best team in 6A is Bingham, according to the RPI. And I would have to put a little bit of a debate. This West High football team, I get it. There's a lot of talent here, and it's a younger program in terms of just, you know, Coach Solovi's, I believe it's his second or third year yep. here at West High. I believe it's his third year. Um, so I understand that you're not as tenured as maybe, uh, you know, a John Lehman at, at Sky Ridge or an Eric Kerr at, at Corner Canyon or even an Ed Larson yeah. at Lehigh, right? <laughs> this point. is a program that's grown and developed quickly, as you see. Vailahi taking it across the 40. Vailahi separating. There's a late flag. It's going to come in. It looks like Holbrook is going to end up bringing this one back, unfortunately, for West. Just a heartbreaking uh, penalty. You just, you hate to see it, JT. Just a great effort by Vailahi. So many moves out there. Just couldn't make the very last one to avoid the turf monster. Regardless, this one's going to be wiped off the score sheet because of a hold here. You know, just great job on the wide receiver screen. You see, I don't, man, I don't know That's about close. that one. That's JT. close. I mean, we're watching the replay so, here. Yeah, that is. Mm. Yeah. Uh. Mm. Uh. <laughs> I think, yeah, it sound like this. Mama start, said, start, if you don't yeah, have any nice, thing, yeah. anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Sounds like that fifth grader when he has to give a speech, basically. Yeah, Anyways, exactly. jumping back in this one. I thought you had a, we'll see what happens on second down here in a second. Definitely want to pick up the discussion you were having about the RPI, because I think it's an interesting one. Sui Sui, going to give it on the ground. Huge hole as he's burst through. Breaking free is Tuco. Suva! <laughs> wow! Julius Takoy Suva! We've seen him make massive plays on defense all game long. So there's a late flag. flag in? Yeah, I think this one's going to be some unnecessary uh, you know, personal foul here for some uh, extracurriculars afterwards. But what a tremendous play is he able to take the handoff, go up the middle. It's the bread and butter counter, right? That and he's just line. so fast and just hits that gap, and nobody's able to tackle Pulse him. so big, you could zone. fit Noah's arc through it. Incredible work in the trenches as we see the penalty come in. Because it was, because it was after the play, it sounds like it's going to be enforced on the PAT kick. Yeah, as it, as it should be. Uh, um, because it was a dead ball foul from what I saw, yeah. you know, from the play. But just a tremendous effort by Tukoy Suva 
who again, primarily a defensive player, but you know, what a great change of place, change of pace play by Coach Salovi there, especially coming off of the turnover on downs. The third touchdown of the third quarter. Panthers pouncing. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. Back here inside West High, we saw the unnecessary roughness penalty at the end there is going to back him up a little bit. But while we wait on this kickoff, Brian, I think you had a really good discussion just about the RPI. And look, it's Corner Canyon, top team for sure. Sky Ridge second as well. After that, you can have a debate about it as well because we can even look at things like common opponent and we can look at how, look, I understand that West lost to American Fork in that one, and, and then Bingham ended up beating American Fork, but obviously West had to go on the road as well. There's a lot of factors that go into that, and just an impressive record, and it should, it's their only loss in state outside of the modern day game as well. Yeah, and listen, I love Region 1 as much as the next guy, JT. That's a competitive region. A lot of tough football played up there. Syracuse sneaking the region crown over top of Davis, Freem, uh, Farmington, and, and Stalwart Weber. Yep. It was a younger team, younger program this year, so a little bit of a different stretch. You know, But, uh, again, Weber gets the win today. Well, still 8-17 left in the fourth quarter, but still leading 31-14 as far as we can tell on our scoreboard update here. But, you know, Region 1 should not have – Three teams in the top ten. Uh, like I, I just, you know, I, I, like I said, mm -hmm. I, I respect that region. They play great football. Yep. You know, Coach Knight up there at Syracuse. There's lots of great teams. We're, we're nitpicking. Yeah, but you know, like again, West High School. It's not their fault that they play in Region Two. Big. But you can see it right here. The scores, you know, the margin of victory, the way that they played tonight against Hunter in a playoff game, it's all there. You can't guarantee a lot of things in high school football. Really quick, I guarantee we're going to see more flags after the whistle because these two teams are jawing at each other. Yeah, well, there's a lot of pride on the line here and the competitiveness, you know. What a tackle flying off the edge by who else? The touchdown man, Julius Tukoisuva. Well, he's just been a monster here in the second and third quarters. You know, guy scores touchdowns, tackles in the backfield, causing fumbles. What can't he do? JT, maybe he needs to come up here and call the fourth quarter. <laughs> maybe. He'd probably get more names right than me. Anyways, Park. Fakes the give, running, trying to get it open, and Matt right away there with the coverage was Ryder Messina. Boy, just a tough night for Park. You see Tukoy Suva and a, a teammate combine, and it looks like Snuka. They're both down still. Uh, just, that's a scary situation there for West High. Scary situation indeed. We're going to step away as they tend to the injured Panther. Back here inside West High, fourth down and looks to be about eight, but it's going to be a punt either way. Yeah. Vilata Tuaone back to receive it with 4.13 to go. Our third quarter has been very slow, Brian, as the first half really flew by. Yeah, it has, and, and a lot of it is because of the action that's happened on the field. Good to see that Tukosu. Oh, no. It was nearly muffed again. Vitor Lusua able to get back on Tuaone, able to get back on it. 
Yeah, that's that's twice now that he's mishandled punts, and you can see that he's frustrated with himself for that one as he walks out the field. A quick conversation there with Coach Hooper, trying to get his mind right. Forget about those two. Play for the next play, but also, JT, good to see that uh, Snuka and Tukosuva able to come off the field on their own power. Back here now with West. As the offense comes back on the field with Sue Sue. So 4 0 2 to go. In our third quarter, Holbrook, bottom of your screen. Sue Sue in the backfield with Ifo 2. They'll get it to Holbrook on the outside. Holbrook waits a second. Gets about eight. Yeah, nice play by number 43 there from Hunter to come out and, and give a little shoulder to Holbrook. And now he's running off the field. Looks like he's got a stinger, too. That's the problem with Charlie Holbrook. He looks like he's a skinny white guy. He's a pretty tough kid out there. Looks like a broken play. Sue Sue was looking for Holbrook. Holbrook was blocking. And not sure what the uh, miscommunication was there. Holbrook blocking well down the field. It's a great, yeah, great block. 15, 20 <laughs> yards. You see Sui Sui a little gimpy as he gets up. You know, it, it, he's done a lot of running and avoiding contact tonight, so you have to kind of respect that. But a great job there by Carson Scanlon, I believe, uh, defensive end, able to make the tackle and loss of about five yards, it looks like. Excuse me, not a loss. I need to yeah, just no down game, records. but as you mentioned, I mean, a loss of an opportunity to easily get a first down if Holbrook looks back. So 3.05 to go here. Sui Sui on third and four. Buying time. A clean pocket, looking for Vailah. He just misses him, but fantastic coverage as well. Got to give some credit to Tanner uh, Carlson, great. as well as on the outside, able to hold it down, Brandon Yath. Yeah, great job there by that uh, Hunter defensive secondary, and they've had a tough task all game long trying to keep up with that elite wide receiver core. And, you know, Vailahi, uh, we talk about Charlie, we talk about Wilson, you know, and the Tua Oni out there as well, it looks like, on the edge. You know, they cycle guys through. There's a lot of talent. And, and just they do a great job. Yeah, and offense is staying on the field for this fourth down here. I mean, they're up 35 to nothing. Pressure's going to come through. Sue Sue looking, gets it out, and it's caught. Hauled in by Ifotu Vainuku. Uh, Vainuku, the running back, set out there in the slot. Great play call, great job by Wes, able to convert. And Sue Sue knew he had him on the rollout there, did a great job. And Wes is back up and, and ready to go, no huddle here. What do you think of that decision to go for it? I mean, you're up 35 to two. You just you want to get out of this game. Might as well put one more on the board, right? Holbrook catches it again on the easy outside completion. It's been one of their most productive plays of the day. It's just letting Holbrook be able to create. He's getting open every time. Yeah. Uh, well, and what happens is eventually you're going to lure that defender to sleep, and Charlie Holbrook's going to break one open. But again, Wes has done that all game long across the board and everything that they've tried. Sui Sui to the outside. Vailahi dives forward, gets the first. Yeah, great job. He puts a little move on the defender, knows he got nothing, so he just dives forward, avoids the big hit, able to move the sticks on this one, although it looks, wow. Okay, maybe. Well, there they go. That was an interesting spot there from yeah, our officiating crew. Wait a second for sure. <laughs> the only surprise is that that's not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Sui Sui waiting, going to give it, and met instantly. Phenomenal job by the front line of the Wolverines. Yeah, it really was, JT, and you see they're going with their bread and butter there on the counter tray, and great job by that defensive front by Hunter, disrupting the play. What you're trying to do with the offensive line is get angles, right? And you want to get a kick-out block from the pullers and then lead up through the hole, and you want to get your down linemen pushing the defensive linemen on good angles. Hunter doesn't allow it. Great job by that defensive front. Sue Sue, pressure breaks through. Sue Sue stepping up. No one in front of him escapes to the left. Running, crosses the 40. Sue Sue waltzes out of bounds for the first down on second and long. And uh, you can see Isaiah just making the smart play. We used to call that a business decision back in my day, JT, where he just gets the first down, gets out of bounds. He's he's really starting to develop into an elite decision maker, game manager here at the high school level. Because I lose my roster. <laughs> A little behind the scenes, wind dropping is, the curtain here yeah, for wind everybody. Is, wind has been brutal today. <laughs> it's throwing off our, even our streaming as well. We're trying to watch our get, watch our replay. Sue Sue to the outside, hauled in by Wilson. Wilson tiptoes the sideline. It's another first down. And again, and talk about it. Wilson looks as we have. Looks like uh, Vinuku is going to have to come off. I think it might have been yeah, a helmet, helmet issue. Yeah, his helmet came off yeah. for Vinuku. 
not allow that to distract from what Wilson does best is those 10 yard chain movers, right? We did see him catch the touchdown earlier there in the second quarter, but he's an excellent receiver, runs tight out routes, and great job to move the chains. Manaya Brown checks in and gets the first carry. Brown charging ahead. Brown dragging a tackler with him. Ooh, takes out Holbrook. Thankfully, Holbrook is all right, but what a big run by Brown. Yeah, and that's the risk of putting guys like Manaya in at running back where he hasn't done that a ton this season. You know, he is hard charging downfield, right? And, and really, if you're West right now, you're trying to get as much action as you can for some of these guys to see, you know, what might give you an opportunity as you roll down to the playoffs to, to maybe get a trick play or something like that going. Sui Sui wants it to the outside. He'll get it to Holbrook, who's pushed out of bounds. Game of about four. Uh, a little reward there for Holbrook as he, he took it in, in the back of the knees from from Brown. Um, yeah. Also, I need to get my eyes checked. That was more like seven. <laughs> yeah, I was like, four? yeah. Four? <laughs> okay. But anyways, West up in the no huddle. Oh uh, boy. Uh oh. A justified flag. Yeah, there's no arguing that one. Multiple guys moving up front for West High School, you know. And, and again, it looks like they're going to call timeout. Repeat of second down. Yeah, very confused at what's going on right here. I did not see a timeout. Hunter is, I mean, they're trying to figure out what's going on as well. They're like, why is the entire coaching staff on the field here? I'm trying to figure out the same thing. Okay. Our play clock is not reset, so I guess, I mean, I did not see a timeout signaled on either side. Well, either way. Most importantly, by the official until just now. Yeah, Goodness timeout gracious. West will step away. Frustrations looming here. Salt Lake Running Company is inspiring our community to move with purpose, embrace adventure, and consciously connect to their bodies. Exercise is essential now more than ever. Take control of the chaos and make time for you. From the gym to the trail, SLRC can help you find the focus to define your finish line. Visit one of our five locations along the Wasatch Front or shop online at slrc.com. Back here inside, Baby was just blasting by Justin Bieber on the speakers. That's how you know you're having a good time. And the West Faithful are as well in Pink Out Night. <laughs> Can't get anything past you there on that one, JT. <laughs> We've hit that point in the broadcast. We're 49 <laughs> seconds left, 35 to 2. West High with a handoff here. And Manaya, you can see why they want to get him working running back right there, JT. He's just a driving force, an absolute load. And, you know, a, a kid that does a great job on the defensive side of the football. And maybe you're just trying to get a little bit of tape here in the playoffs to say, showcase yeah. that he has other abilities too. You're doing a good job taking play-by-play -play duties. I took straight-up color duties, literally calling out colors. <laughs> as Brown fighting and then dragged down. Ooh. Almost a horse collar there. Nearly. As you see, 24, I believe that's Muleni, wrestles him down just short. It's going to be the final play of the, of the third quarter here. And, man, what a third quarter it was. The Panthers put it on three touchdowns scored in this one. They got off to a great start as they were able to score on the first pass from Holbrook, forced a fumble on the first defensive play. Just this, what a job by West so far. Yeah, and, and the, you know, that's the kind of effort that you want to see from them consistently through four quarters, JT. As we enter into the fourth quarter now, West trying to pull away from Hunter High School. You're watching KSL Rewind on KSL Sports. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them. Because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time, courses on your time, graduate on your time. WGU, the University of You.
The West Panthers, so inspirational, man. They're getting it done here. 35 to two right here. This was not one that we expected to be super close, JT. It, you know, good effort by Hunter to keep it close early on. If you miss cues, they were able to capitalize, just never able to put it in the end zone. And, and West just pulling away here in the third quarter as they have fourth and short here to start things off in the fourth. Yeah, fourth and short. Sui Sui gives it, and I don't think he got there. Wow. Phenomenal tackle made. Wow, what a job for Hunter on that one. Looked like on the stop that time it was Junior Talfoy. Yeah, great job by Talfoy there. Like trying to sneak the handoff there. And you kind of kind of question the decision making by Sui Sui there a little bit because he did have a lot of open field. And that's the hard part about making reads in those situations, especially at the high school level, where maybe a defender looks like he's doing one thing and he's actually doing the other. Just a really Tough call there. You wish you kind of kind of kept it, kept it, and maybe worked to the outside a little bit. But nevertheless, a big, big stop for the Hunter Wolverines here in, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, so impressive by Talfoy on that one, and Talfoy as well. I mean, he's only a junior as well, 6'3", 2024 as well. What a play he made there. As we'll see, the Hunter offense get back to work. Gives it to Paya. Paya for a short gain. But going back to that play by Talloy on fourth and short, what did you see, Brian? Well, you see they've got the speed option on, trying to sneak the handoff there to uh, looks like Vailahi, looks like it was. Yep. And just not able to get enough yardage, not able to get enough push. Great job by the defender. Uh, looks like the speed option was a decoy. That was the plan all along to hand it off and just well covered by that Hunter defense. How many times have we seen Vailahi break tackles as well? So it shows you the strength as well of Talfoy, able to drape him down second and eight from the six. 10.55 to go in this one with Nathan Park. Look to the outside, fake the wide receiver screen. He's going to run it instead. It's absolutely devoured. Huge tackle by Khalil Laufau. Yeah, a little bit of confusion there in the secondary for West High as Hunter brings the motion. They're trying to roll coverage. Park lets him sit and roll into the coverage. Kind of surprising as he waits for that to happen. Not sure if he was waiting for a signal from the sideline or what with that. Problem is that Laufau is still out there, and Laufau roars into the backfield for the sack. Lau foul with the Panthers take down that time around. This West defense has been relentless all game long. They have not given up any points. Offense, the reason for the safety, of course. The reason this one is 35 to 2. And now it is third and 11. Park, pressure breaks through. He's going to step up and will be engulfed. Lau Taimi with the stop. Yeah, and if it's not Lau Fao, then it's like uh, Lau Taimi out there making the play for that edge group uh, for West defense. Um, the some extracurriculars again. And, and listen, you know, we've, we've fired up on our sideline. Yeah, we've had our fair share of commentary on the officiating tonight. They've done a good job of keeping the scuffles to a minimum. That's very true. That is a very good point because there have been it has been very chippy all game long, and despite all of that, they've been able to keep it within reach as well. So see by Lahi going to go back to return this punt as well. So a little bit of explosive energy on it. Yeah, well, and you have to think that part of that is just because you know Tua Hone has had a hard time handling some of those punts, and and so get your sure-handed wide receiver Vailahi back there. Make sure you secure the punt as uh, the official is signaling aggressively to reset the play clock, finally gets it going. <laughs> this, hun this Hunter coaching staff is as fired up as I've seen coaches as well. And I understand the frustrations for yes. the officiating as well. Well, this is a group that's, that's trying to build a program out here in Hunter, and, and they're trying to in, in, in inject some passion into this community and into this team. And so, you know, bringing that in the game is, wow. Vailahi running ahead. Vailahi makes a few miss. Vailahi able to drape a couple tackles a little bit forward as well. Wow, Vailahi able to get something out of what was going to be nothing. And we're going to get a flag as well. And when that official threw it, he was staring directly at the Hunter sideline. I do not think this is going to have anything to do with the play. No, it, it doesn't. You can see there's a lot of aggressiveness over there on that coaching staff as there's a few coaches on the field with their hands out asking what's going on with this, this you know, officiating crew. And listen, when you're on a coaching staff, JT, you're always biased towards your players, always biased towards your group. You always feel like the officials are against you. And, and so you have to control yourself if you're that group. I understand emotions bubbling over here. You're trying to stay competitive, but it just a, you know, I'm not sure that what the call is going to be here. It looks like 
They signal the first down. Trying to figure things out here at Gene Plaga Stadium. And then we're going to wave the flag off. So that is interesting, because as I mentioned, that was not to do with the play. The exact official who threw it was staring at the Hunter sideline when he did so. Wonder if it was someone too far on the field or whatever happened. Explanations going on over there as well as they'll talk things over. Either way, frustrations continuing to mount for the Hunter coaching staff. Uh, you see the Hunter coaches back out on the field right now. It and looks like it's going to be officials timeout. I think there's going to be some uh, conversations here with that coaching staff over there. It, yeah, looks like, it looks like there's something going on in the field. Of injured players, is that or the JT? I, I honestly think they're just talking things over at the moment, Brian. Difficult to tell. There's a lot going on either way. So at the moment, and yeah, maybe they are tending to an injury. So good eye by you, Brian. But one thing that's interesting about this one is so West, obviously, at the moment, looking very good to get a win here. When and if they're able to do so, they will take on West Jordan next week, the eighth seed at six. And that will be at West Jordan. That should be an incredible game. That's a really good West Jordan team this year that's been able to surprise a lot of people. Yeah, it is, and, and you know, this will be a, a true test for West, I think, you know, as they progress in, into, you know, this is the meat of the playoff schedule, yep. right? And this is where the RPI really has an effect, where, whereas, you know, a lower-rated team, you really have to play against some aggressive opponents. Sui Sui gets it out to Wilson. Wilson ahead. Wilson makes one miss. Finally swung down. Uh, you see nice little action off of the counter tray there as we get some more extracurriculars, and there's going to be a penalty here. Tempers are raging right now. Fight club underway at West High. Yeah, and this is when you see the West High coaching staff getting after the player there, telling him, calm down, keep your emotions in check. Great job by that staff. Settle things down there. It's but, you know, again, these are two programs with a lot of pride. There's a lot of crossover here with, uh, you know, families and everything like that between the two of them. And, you know, a lot of relations and everything like that. And so you have to agree that there's a lot of aggression. Yeah, a lot of aggression indeed going in. You know, got competitors on the field. Things are getting after it as well. Junior's going to make his way out. We're also going to see um, head coach Harold. Moleni well, also make his way out. I mean, they just got to get things sorted out here right now and just make sure the rest of this game, the biggest thing you don't want to see is anyone get hurt. That, and you just don't want to see things escalating, right? The emotions are riding high, so great job by this officiating crew. And, and like, like I said, JT, we've, we've had our fun with the penalties and the delays and everything like that. This is a great move by this crew. Have the coaches out there together, make them talk face-to-face, -face, explain it to them both together that this needs to be settled down. And I think you're going to get an, an uh, personal foul here against West, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, it is going to be unsportsmanlike over there. So both coaches leaving, looking frustrated as well. And this is not a Ron Burgundy situation where, boy, things escalated quickly. This has been building all game long. Even from the first series, we saw these two teams getting tense, getting after it. And it's led now to what's been. We see two coaches meeting at midfield, which I don't even think we've seen that happen this year, Brian. No, and, and listen, that's the, the intensity of the playoffs, right? And that's the intensity of, you know, you interviewed Yogi Roth. Uh, a few, uh, I believe it was a week ago yes. for Locked On Utes, and he talked about a land grab, right? Where yeah. it's Utah versus USC. In essence, this is a land grab for Hunter and West, right? Mm -hmm. These are programs that are competing against one another in the region, trying to find some balance. And, and for Hunter, this is about making a statement. You know, if you're West, you're the favorite. This is what you're supposed to do. Oh, wow. So it's an ejection, actually. So, wow, huge penalty here. They look like. As SpongeBob would say, five hours later, we are finally ready to resume play here after that one. But an ejection, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays in to next week's game as well. I be <coughs> says the ejection along the offensive line, but I mean, look, this is West. They have offensive. I think they look. We don't know what the state is, but look, mm -hmm. offensive line they should be at least okay because man, they got some meat up front. Sui Sui running, giving chase, throws it low. Wilson unable to haul it in. Yeah, well, if anything, JT, maybe both of these teams should meet up at the Krabby Patty afterwards <laughs> and then, you know, kind of get together and, and work things out. But that is a pretty tremendous ejection if it is, uh, I believe it was number 62, Samisi Falatea, uh, who was ejected from the game. Uh, you know, this is a talented group here at West, but nevertheless, it's a group that's worked together extremely well, and you just don't want to see that kind of continuity disrupted. Sui Sui, waiting all day to throw, buying time, thinking about it, going to end up just throwing it away. Just such a great job just waiting and buying time, Brian. 
It does. And, and you know, it, on that one, you kind of like the decision to throw downfield, even though it's incomplete, because he's trying to look downfield, right? He is so good, so explosive with his legs. You know that he can convert that if he absolutely needs to. But he's trying to grow as a player here. And, and I think it's a good job of him keeping the guys downfield. Uh, now you're, the next step is to work on uh, as we get another whistle. Yes, yeah, so we'll talk things over a little bit more. Like to take a moment Not, yeah, no clue what this stoppage is over. While we have a second, though, Brian, you were out in Weber earlier. Talk about that program able to get a monumental upset at Roy. Yeah, a huge win for the Weber Warriors. And listen, that's a young football team, but they're extremely well coached. You've got a veteran coaching staff there. Jason Anderson does a great job. They develop kids. And, and you've seen that, you know, they've got some talent up there. Tremendous senior quarterback, senior leadership, but just a young, young group. You know, we've got a young, uh, I believe it's, uh, as we get an adjustment to the clock here, add 10 seconds to it, and it brings us to 838. But, um, you know, that's a program that I, I, I was surprised to see that them drop a few of those games throughout the season but you knew that they'd be prepared going into the playoffs and you know it, that could give them a huge leap in momentum as they go into the second round sui sui with time airs it out wilson on the reception wilson swung down uh, trying to get a little tunnel screen going out there and and the hunter defenders do a good job of avoiding the big dogs from west and, and getting behind the offensive lineman, able to bring Wilson down before he's able to get behind his convoy there. And now we've got fourth and about. I mean, they went for it, what, in fourth in their own territory last yeah, game. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, not no surprised to see the offense one, on the field remaining here. You got Vailahi, Holbrook, and Wilson all at the bottom of your screen. Sui Sui alone in the backfield on this one. It's a four man rush. He wants it all, looking deep, tripped up, waiting. No flags. Yeah, it looks like an incidental contact. An interesting call on fourth and six, right? You're going four verts, all vertical routes, trying to find, it looks like number 19 there for West. And just, you know, not able to connect on that one was Isaiah Sui Sui. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. At this point, JC, or JT, it's kind of a moot point. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've been calling games together for how many weeks now, and you call me JC? How dare you, Brian? Brian? Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm rumbling and bumbling over my words tonight. You know, I'm, I'm playing a little nicked up, JT. I'm sure the people listening true, at home true. can hear my voice That's a little true. raspy. Uh, got a little too hard after it at the Utah USC game last week, <laughs> as we see uh, Park throws the pass out here. Yeah, aired out to the outside. Jackson goes with the hurdle. He cleared it as well. Jackson with the hurdle, but then absolutely destroyed by Ryder Messina. That's a flag. Ah, uh, apparently so. What? I'm not sure what the call is going to be here. Hey, Dusty Lister, if he was on this call, would be absolutely losing his mind right now. I can tell you guys that much. He very well may be back in the studio very right well now as, yeah. as he and Jeff Hansen do a great job. Yeah, Jeff is fantastic as well. But yeah, this one's going to be against Hunter. It's a personal foul, yeah. Oh, is this, so it is against Hunter, so interesting. Yeah. Just based on the timing of when the flag came in, but must have been after the play, must have been something well, said or whatever. I, I think it might be hurdling a defender because I believe at the high school level, I may, be, I may be mistaken on this one, JT, but I believe that is outlawed, and so that is the penalty there. We'll have to have, uh, we'll have, to have the truck check on that one. Dusty, if you're research. listening in, feel free to text me and update me on that role, buddy. <laughs> So either way, back it up. It was a sensational play by Jackson. And one thing, I mean, if you're looking at this for Hunter, look, Jackson is a senior, so they won't be back on this team last year. But Kenyon Jackson has been absolutely electric. Park with time, wants it all deep. He's looking for his intended receiver, and it's broken up. Outstanding coverage on the outside by the Panthers. And guess what, Brian? It's Groundhog Day. We got a flag. Yeah, uh, well, this time it's not going to be for hurdling a defender, which <laughs> in 2015 was a rule that was instituted wow. at the high school level. Okay. Yeah. Look at so, look at you stepping up with the rules. It's hey. almost like I might have done it on the <laughs> sideline as a coach at some point in time and actually known what I was talking about. And back in the day, you were someone who used to hurdle people as well in the open field, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, the only thing I ever hurdled was, uh, <laughs> you know, my teammates to get to the closest hot dog. <laughs> While they talk this out really quick, I once tried to hurdle a guy mid-game as well, just trying to get through a block, and I didn't even get close to clearing him. So it's better better than I've done. <laughs> yeah, anything outside of a jump rope is a little bit yeah. too much for me to try to hurdle, JT. So, uh, you know, you're definitely the more nimble, the more athletic of the two of us. Uh, but, again, we're to the point in this game where 
I don't know about that. You should have seen me earlier today forever. trying to get up that ladder, Brian. I, I was struggling. <laughs> Anybody's still listening to this. <laughs> 7.37 to go here. Shout us out on Twitter. Send us a text. Park. Rolls to the right, pressure in his face. Gonna get open. There is no one on that opposite side of the field. Wide open to Kutu. Kutu able to charge ahead. Kutu with a 20 yard gain. Yeah, Kutu an absolute load. Difficult to bring down there at number 21. As you see, Tua Ona coming on the corner blitz, trying to get to Park before he's able to get the ball out. But Hunter doing a nice job anticipating the blitz, throws the safety valve, able to get a good gain there. But still, JT, it is second and a bus ride for a first round, for a first down. Yeah, Coach Maleni's squad had something going there. There was no coverage on that opposite side, as you mentioned, Brian, and it's a phenomenal job by this West team. And as you've called two of their games now, we talked about how they thought they run fairly, ranked in the RPI. Just what do you think this team is capable of going forward? Well, I, I genuinely think, and outside of this performance, which, you know, marred only by a few mistakes, but I think the team that we saw in the third quarter is the team that West has the potential to be. And if they play to that level with the, with the talent that they have, I think they're a contender to be a state champion. Now, the hard part about it is you've been through an entire season and you're still making some of the same mistakes, right? This first round, you should be really refining some of that kind of stuff. And as you get against the teams, the more refined programs, the the Corner Canyons, the Sky Ridges, you know, even the American Forks. We called the Timview game earlier in the season where that was a huge problem for Timview. It was, yeah. And, 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 you know, you have some of these talented teams that where it's just it comes to them so naturally, right? And you have yep. so much depth and so much ability across so many different positions. And as you see, there's some of the twos coming out now for, for West High into this one, an opportunity to get them some playing time. Uh, you know, you just need to see those, your seniors and your leaders really buckle down. Park needs to get rid of it. Got absolutely go engulfed. Ball is out and jumped on by the Panthers, flying in to make a huge play. That time was the man we've seen returns punt so many times tonight. It was Valita Tuaone. Again, the blindside blitz from Tuaone and Park does he literally does not see it coming as he is just crumpled by Tua One and just a great job by Tua One to avoid the linebacker, the offensive lineman and just great hit, great tackle, big turnover as West takes over here at the 15 yard line and for Park, it's been a tough, tough night. He's taken a lot of hits. That kid in my book, JT, is an absolute warrior. 100%. And, and, you know, you hope that he gets a nice ice bath tonight. Maybe mom and dad give him an extra scoop of ice cream. Chocolate milk. And when he gets, oh, I know how much oh. you love a chocolate malt. Hey, hey. <laughs> I said milk, but I like malts as well. <laughs> so what you, this is what you get with a, line, with a lineman booth. You get food talk at this point in the game. <laughs> And we see a couple of the twos coming out here now for West High School as you see Louis Hamilton take over at quarterback. Yeah, Hamilton in. And that was quick. It's going to be a timeout by West, not liking the look they were in. Junior calls the time, 626 left. We are stepping away for a moment. We'll be back for the conclusion of this game on KSL Sports Rewind. Mountainland Power Equipment provides exceptional service and high quality brands you know and trust in lawn, landscaping, and snow removal products. Our experienced staff of technicians repair all types of snow plows, snow blowers, lawn mowers, small engines, and is trained to answer questions about lawn, garden, snow removal, and landscaping products. Mountainland Power Equipment, now with two locations to serve you in Salt Lake City and Springville. West's offense back on the field, 626 to go. Appreciate all of you who are listening in, which at this point in the night actually might be a decent number if you're still tuned into the Red Zone channel because most of the other games went final. We still got six minutes left. Hey. Hamilton gives it on the ground. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to see any kind of fireworks from this West offense in terms of play calls as most of the second unit in for them. This one getting further and further out of reach for the Hunter Wolverines. We saw in that last series, JT uh, Park, the quarterback from Hunter, just takes a huge hit from Tuolone on the blitz from the backside and, and just never were able to get into rhythm was this Hunter offense. And Hamilton gives it again to Vainuku. Vainuku charging head. The powerful Vainuku fires forward. 4-6. 
We haven't seen a lot of Vayanuku tonight, but he's still a weapon for this offense, as you see freight the train. battering ram. Yeah, freight train, even better way, charging through the tunnel, like breaks through into daylight, scores the touchdown there. That'll put West up 41-2 to two, pending this PAT, JT, and that does, I believe, put us into mercy rule territory where we'll have a running clock now. Yes, we will. It's the... We'll see how long it ends up running for because we're going to probably have a couple more penalties before this one's over. But we shall see as the rest of it's set to play out. But once again, appreciate all of you. If you have joined us in now, JT Wisterzill and Brian Brown with you on the call. is the West Panthers. It was a little bit of a slow start for West. But after they shook that off, man, they got rolling, especially in that third quarter with three touchdowns. Yeah, and, and really the West High team that I expected to come out in the first quarter. And this is a tough one. When you've already played Hunter, you played him. It's a region opponent. It's in, in a lot of respects, it's still a rival, right? You're on the west side and everything that comes with that. And to come into this game and have to play Hunter in the first round, you have to think that maybe this West High team was a little bit uh, feeling maybe a little disrespected, JT. You know, again, we talked about the RPI, and this is much better yeah. than a ninth ranked team, you know. And then not to take anything away from the big and minors who are in third place, but that's where RPI seems to kind of miss the. Missed the Miss point. The yeah, yeah. yeah. missed the mark. Yeah. While we wait for this kick to go away, so obviously we have West as a huge winner here. Brian, who are some of your other winners on the night? I think if I'm going to go first, I'll take Mountain Ridge really quick. A phenomenal performance by the Sentinels. Able to get a win. That's a Westlake team three years in a row. They've gone into the playoffs with a losing record, and they've won in the first round. And the Sentinels and Coach Mayfu's squad able to hold on and get the win. Yeah, big one for Coach Mayfu there as they're able to get out of there with the win. And again, you know, uh, Hey, shout out to Fremont. We saw them week one. Yeah, Fremont's had a really up and down season. Able to get the first round win against Granger, the second place team here in Region 2, a team that I got to see last week that I yeah. thought was taking some momentum into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Surprising one there. Yeah, shout out Christian Blanche, one of the best linebackers in the state also. Also, East, you know, got a couple losses, but they're against really good teams. Kind of a sleeping giant. They put up 70 on Skyline tonight. Also a huge win by Alta to defeat Bonneville. Bonneville was one of the last remaining undefeated teams in the state early on. And Alta able to do, put some work in. Win by over 20 tonight. Yeah, and a real barn burner up there is Wasatch able to edge, edge Woods Cross 28-27. to 27. Congratulations to Coach Steve Coburn and his crew out there at Wasatch. One of those programs that's kind of on the outside looking in in terms of you know, being outside of the valley, but it's a competitive group. I was able to watch them against Mountain Ridge, put up a fight out there, and you're seeing like, it's hard to bet against Coach Coburn when you're going into yeah. the playoffs. Well, and Woods Cross as well. I mean, that's a team that had wins against Bonneville, had wins against Park City, beat Viewmont. Like, there's a ton of good wins. That's a really good Woods Cross team. Yeah, as you mentioned, Wasps get it done. Yeah, well managed program there at Woods Cross as well. Brody Benson, who'd been in Highland for years and years, goes out trying to establish some culture there. You know, and, and Woods Cross has always been a program that struggled to really establish themselves themselves and so great job by Wasatch to come in there tough one for the for the Wildcats but that's a younger squad that will come back next year and you have to believe that they'll uh, be aggressive big time play by Paya as he's able to get it in on the run and Paya with another huge carry as well Brian what other games have your eye uh, big one there as we see uh, Park City over Timpanogos there, 35-14. to 14. Bit of a surprise there. Timpanogos, a very explosive <laughs> offense, and you have to think that that Park City Miners defense did a great job to limit them to just 14 points. Something to monitor as we move forward in the 5A playoffs. There's something to monitor. We're going to step away as we have an injured Panther down on the field on KSL Sports Rewind. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. Back here inside West High, where the Panthers are in command, 42 to 2. JT Wistersill and Brian Brown with you on the call. This one is winding down, as is the Hunter Wolverine season. Always tough on scene. Always tough when it's your last opportunity out there for this team. As a lot of these guys, their high school football season comes to an end. But Pia is not running like that right there. Another huge hole made by the Hunter offensive line, and Pia exploding through it. 
Yeah, and you're seeing just the, the, the depth here for West High School as, as the second unit is in, and that Hunter offensive line able to open some giant holes. That's what they've been used to doing all year long. Paya once again charging for Paya with another first down run. And the Wolverines are going after it like they're Hugh Jackman and X Men. <laughs> well, hopefully, there's not a Deadpool moment here for them where they run into a sword. But, uh, you know, as we talk about this West High defense, you know, this is a great opportunity for them to develop some depth here as they've got the second unit out there, get some guys some reps. You know, we saw some great stuff from that first unit, uh, but you always want to make sure that you're prepared for any situation as you move forward in the playoffs. And JT, there's some great matchups as we move into the second round. There are some fantastic matchups. Paya fighting forward, getting more yards. What a push by Paya and that Hunter offensive line. But Brian, as you mentioned, we're going to dip with under three minutes to go here in our game. There's a lot of fun second round matchups next week. Which ones have your eye? Well, a very interesting one is we see we were with the upset against Roy, and they're going to take on region opponent Farmington mm -hmm. in that second round. And Farmington's the team that scuffled a little bit as it entered in the playoffs, had a chance to take the region crown, lost at Syracuse to end the season so that's one that to me stands out that'll be a really fascinating matchup excited to watch that game you know another one that I'm very curious about uh, as we look at the schedule uh, you have to wonder what uh, Mountain Ridge American Fork is like right this is American you know American Fork is a good football team a lot of talent as we see Park throws another incompletion here and I, you know, JT, you and I both have a chance to see American Fork in person, had a chance to see Mountain Ridge. I feel like that the talent at Mountain Ridge matches up well against American Fork. I agree with that. But it's a team that just hasn't really capitalized on that talent throughout the season. Yeah, Kate Uluave, Junior Sia as well, High Hem, a loaded group as well. But Kehev, Caveman, we're starting to get things clicking a little bit. Obviously got off the rails against Sky Ridge, but be interested to see how they come back in and get after it. Under two minutes to go in this one now as well. Paya, huge hole ahead. Paya makes a cut to the outside. Paya bounces another one as he's dragged down. We'll see if this Hunter team decides to use any other timeout is they might want to punch one more and they're trying to play with that tempo right now seeing if they can get one in and you know, just an opportunity for a, a bunch of seniors out there to score one last touchdown to their high school career yeah for sure and especially in a playoff game and and to do it against this west high defense as we see Pia grinding trying to get short trying to get in the end zone but just falls short about a yard away from the end zone Paya, yep, just about a yard away, as you mentioned. Got to imagine Paya might get it here tonight. Paya's a guy as well who's fought all game long. He's been outstanding, that being Kenyon Paya. And said it's going to be Parker on the keeper. Parker gets it in. Touchdown, Hunter. Yeah, and just a gritty, tough effort by that Hunter offense, especially that quarterback as it looks like they're setting up for the PAT. Yeah, Nathan Parker been tough all night, as you talked about earlier, Brian, as well. You said he could play on your team any day. Absolutely. You just love the effort. You love the, the warrior mentality to keep going, fighting through everything. And listen, that's a lot to fight through when you're facing this West High defense. So a huge shout out to that offensive unit. Happy for them to get a touchdown on the board. If you're West High, the shutout was already off the board. Yeah. Not a big deal. And and the bottom line is you just want to get everybody out of here safe and, and injury free at this point. Yeah, we mentioned this West team. I mean, they already have four other shutout shutouts on the season. Parker, Parker down as well. They're able to get him up eventually. But Nathan Park, as we mentioned, just fought hard all night long. He's going to limp off. Expect to be the last time we see him. He had a huge interception earlier in this game as well when this was still a game, Brian. Yeah, and it's just, you know, a few throws here and there that he probably wishes he had back. And this one could have been blown wide open in a different direction, JT. A tough, gritty, impressive effort from this Hunter Wolverine team. It was very close there in the first quarter. And then, you know, after the first half, West comes out, that huge explosive third quarter really opened the door. And at that point, it was just too many tidal waves for Hunter to absorb. They weren't able to, to overcome all of that adversity. That's how it ended up shaking out, as you talked about, Brian. So an incredible performance by the Panthers as well. And West taking on West Jordan. They just said it out loud as well. It's a West Jordan team that we didn't know how they would fare in that Region 3 race on the season, but they were in it for a very long time. You know, lost a couple tough games against Bingham as well as got upset by Mountain Ridge. But still, that's a team capable of getting a win, Brian. Yeah, it absolutely is. There's a lot of talent out there at West Jordan. They've been a competitive team all year, you know, about that 15 to 20 range in terms of the rewind rankings. 
And listen, West is going to have to play much better if they're going to be able to compete against West Jordan. You can't have those same kind of mental mistakes and the missed assignments against a West Jordan team that you've had tonight against Hunter. They start out the season 4 and 0, of course, lost to Corner Canyon, that one understandable, but took care of business against Riverton. That Riverton team is always pesky. They got a win as well. Riverton is a team I'm watching for as well in the second round, see if they can get an upset. I think they're going to have an opportunity to just because of how talented that team is. I think they do a phenomenal job playing hard out there, going after it every time, and they could definitely beat Davis in my opinion. But sticking with this West Jordan team as well, like I mentioned, losses to Mountain Ridge as well as Bingham, of course, but all those losses are to borderline top 10 top 15 teams on the season and they got to sit back and watch West this week and I think there's a number of things they'll look at and say hey we got a chance to make this one a game yeah absolutely and, and, and you know I, there's vulnerability on every team JT and and so the the task at hand is trying to get the matchups that favor your guys against their guys right and if you're West high there's a lot of guys on your side that match up well just throughout across the board but especially defensively they they there are very few positions on this team where they are at a at, at a deficit this is always a great night in terms of getting high school football underway but always a tough one as well as these high school players for hunter their season comes to a close what kind of fight did you see out of this team tonight brian well you know it's it's a tough game for for west where, again, facing a region opponent again in the first round of the playoffs, you know, the slight from the RPI. So I am, as I look at this game as a whole, JT, that third quarter effort is what I really look at and, and want to highlight. It's a great job coming out at halftime, establishing dominance, being the team that you've been all year long, and being explosive there in the third quarter, really putting the game out of reach there. Otherwise, it was a bumpier, bumpy road early on and just a tough, tough situation where there were disconnects. You know, we had all the officiating issues and, and, and just a slow-moving game. And then that first series where the West High defense came on and off the field four separate times, just really tough to get going. But at the end of the day, West did what it always does, extends this one out, hangs up 42, and walks off the field a winner. Yep, they are able to walk off the fields as winner as well, Brian. And, you know, just talking about Isaiah Sue for a quick second as well, just feels like he's really in control of this offense. The last time I saw him, that wasn't a fair barometer. He's going against the number one team, who's still currently the number one team, as they were the reigning 2021 national champions as well in the modern-day Monarchs. And feels like Sue Sue with Vailaki, Holbrook, this offensive line, this run game as well, with guys like Vainuki as well as guys like Arona. It feels like they can really do things and make a deep run. It does. There's a ton of assets on this offensive unit, right? And Sui Sui is doing a good job of finding the guys that are open, getting guys the ball. You know, we saw a great effort from Ty Arona early on in the receiving game. A little bit unusual for him as a running back, but also, you know, guys like Wilson stepping up. You know, Charlie Holbrook, who's a guy that we've talked about extensively on this on this broadcast. Vailahi, who was, you know, electric tonight uh, at, at, in yards after the catch. And so you've seen Isaiah Sui Sui evolve as a game manager and really a distributor and that's the important part about it as they move forward in the playoffs and indeed they will move forward your final from west high and gene plagara stadium 42 to 9 the west panthers take it an outstanding effort on both sides of the balls offensively and defensively for coach solovie's squad shouted as well to harold molina and his staff at hunter and the team an outstanding year the fight they put in as well and those men can hold their heads up high because they fought all game long for brian brown for our cameraman mike christensen i'm jt wistersill have an outstanding friday night and an even better weekend everyone